Hello everyone, welcome back to the Car Chat Podcast, and I'm here today in a different place to normal. I'm with Ian Cook, aka Pop Bang Colour, Mr. Pop Bang Colour, up in Coventry. Hello. Oh yeah, thanks for coming up to Coventry. <laughs> You've been sent to Coventry, it's a phrase there. Sent to Coventry? Sent, sent to Coventry, yeah. What does that mean? Oh, so this is history. It's not my strong point. Uh, I learnt it from a project I did. So, uh, way back when, when the city was a walled city, yeah, people who were ro- ro- royalists or something, they were sent to a church, and it was treated as like a prison. Ah, okay. And that's where they were sent to Coventry. It's because they were sent. It wasn't a good thing. Uh, no, no, but it's now used a sense of if you end up in the city, oh, you've been sent to Coventry. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's something. It's a phrase of of of, of usage. Of, of yeah. So I, as a not as a non Coventrian as well, you know, <laughs> it's somebody who lives in the city but hasn't wasn't from the city. You're right. never you're never a Coventry. Yeah, you know, somebody who's you born. don't. You, it's a birthright, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you if you haven't if you're not from the city originally and you you come here for work or whatever, you're still very much off of somewhere else. And you, you won't understand it because you're not from. Yeah, you're not from. Coventry. You can't understand. You can't understand. You don't know my life. Because you haven't you haven't grown up from the roots. <laughs> you've you've just come here for the last five years or so. Yeah, but uh, it sort of sums up the UK. Everyone feels about feels like that about everyone else. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> but at the same time, it's very much my. Yeah. Now it's my my home. It's, it's your home. Right. I I live and choose to be and as, and in terms of the automotive industry, it's very much a a city of. Yeah, because yeah. there's loads of big companies around it. Oh, and, and small little engineering, like all mm. the kind of the autonomous car stuff and concept cars are built here. It's Robo Race near here. It's just down the road, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally Banbury, yeah. So it's, it's, it's part of that motorsports valley, they call it. So it's mm. that kind of the M40 corridor from, from Birmingham down to, down to Oxford and a little bit, yeah, because Oxford is where the mini factory is. Yeah. Um, so there's that kind of that corridor of F1, Formula E. Yeah, you've got Donington, just 40, yeah, 45 far. minutes from here. So you can kind of extend it up the M1 as well, where you have the the other stuff. Um, obviously on the M1, you've got uh, Millbrook and the testing ground. And yeah, there's so many sick tracks and stuff near here. Like if yeah. if I was to plonk myself in a part of the world to be near race tracks, this is pretty good. This is yeah, you, you probably yeah, if you put like a needle down and span it, yeah, it'd probably be on Coventry. So. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so then obviously you, you, the obvious ones are JLR, Jager Land Rover, yeah, yeah. Aston Martin, Pro Drive. But as I say, there's loads of like AP Racing who do all of the racing yeah, brakes. Brakes, for, yeah. For they're literally on industrial state five minutes from here. Cool. Um, obviously, you've got Coventry Motor Fest that goes on in the city as well. That sounds like quite a cool event. I've it's, not been to that. It's great. I'm part of the team who are oh. part, part of that. But yeah, it's uh, every year it gets bigger and bigger, and now it's official. Race, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a time trial event. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's it's uh, it takes over the whole city. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Cov is it, it's a ring road. Like it's based mm. on, yeah, you know, it's based on a ring road. And if you choose to shut down half of that ring road, that's a that's a brave, <laughs> that's a brave thing to do on any on any day of the week. Yeah, you know, if if there's some road works going on and they shut down, the people are like, what? What what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. because yeah, you know, it's that that. Circle is is essential to getting yeah, around. Yeah, getting and, around. And getting around, and so yeah. So for what for one weekend a, a year, they they shut the ring road. Well, half the ring road. And I guess part of that is they introduced pretty recently. I guess the rules that you could race on roads. Again. Yeah, it's, it's the it's the. I think there's some small events in kind of like the back and beyond somewhere that shut down their town. There's places over towards kind of uh, Worcestershire, these small towns which they're able to shut down and, and, and whatever, to bark events. So it's very much a, a national championship mm. round. Yeah, you have things like Gobstopper and the, some of the cars that yeah, do the proper like Goodwood trying to get the, the overall track the time. The hill climb and stuff, yeah. Um, they, they come and do the, Pretty cool. do the time trial. Now we have, we have managed to completely bypass the start of, normally the start of my podcast, which is explaining who you are. Now, wait one second, I'll get to you. <laughs> <laughs> wait. For, for the people that are listening, I highly suggest for this podcast, you at least check out the podcast on YouTube because I am in Ian's studio and Ian is an artist and he's and you can hear some crazy stuff going on. So, Ian, tell us what you do, who you are. 
so my name's Ian Cook, uh, but I'm better known as Pop Van Colour, um, an artist who paints with radio control cars, tyres and wheels. Uh, and this is my studio here in, uh, in Coventry, in Fargo Village, um, where I'm painting a blue Ferrari. So yes. I'm, just a random blue Ferrari, I just chose it. Any old blue yeah, thing. Oh, they're blue thing. No, um, obviously it's it's it is F forty blue. It is. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for coming from the from up from London town to. to yeah, uh, I, I I wasn't sure what to expect when I arrived here, and we're in this sort of cool new, hip, arty little development. Yeah. I think that's, that's not bad. Yeah, it's it's yeah. So it used to be way back in 1904, mm. I think. From 94, it was a engine radiator factory. Yeah. So it built it built radiators, and then five five years. You know, it's been over five years. It's celebrated their fifth birthday. So probably eight years ago or so, they they redeveloped it. And so what it then went from a radiator factory into like a carpet warehouse, into industrial units. And then over time, it's be increasingly became like a kind of a creative space for, for artists. There's a brewery, there's a, um, there's a gym up here as well. And all, there's a museum, there's and lots of little kind of little creative spaces for, diff for people to do different things in the city. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool spot. And we are in your, we're in your studio and you're currently sitting on the floor over a large bit of, what is it, technically, canvas, canvas board, yeah. Yeah, canvas, canvas. Yeah, yeah. and you've, I guess we'll sort of get into the process of what you do. Yeah. The thing that's very unique about the way Ian paints is he uses remote control cars. So all over this place, there are tons and tons of remote control cars. And they're all on, there we are. And they're all on. So. I'll give you a little bit of a description of what I can see. So Ian's sitting in the middle of his sort of studio space and all around him is paint and then all these remote control cars, but they're all flipped upside down and they're all on. And he has one, one or two remotes? Uh, yeah, I've got a, a cluster. Uh, yeah, kind of a, 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 tray of, a tray of remotes. A tray of very, very painted remotes. Yeah. Um, and they're all on the same frequency so that he, I guess he can pop and... Yeah. Pick up whatever car, whenever. There are two frequencies, so 27 and 40 megahertz. They're just, they're just shop bought. They're not like special. Yeah. When I say not special, you've seen Toy Story, you know, at night when all these. The, <laughs> yeah, all, they all come all, alive. They all come alive and they're like, oh God, why are we upside down again? <laughs> he didn't use me today. Um, but yeah, no, so I have a range of. Of RC cars, large ones, like larger ones. I can't, I can't remember the scale. Like one, one, third, one eighty, sixteen, eighteen, six, something like that. Yeah, and then we've got the smaller ones, and then to do the details and the kind of radiators and lights and stuff. You've got the um, tires and wheels that are used to, to do that. Essentially, you, the the tires and wheels and stuff. Do you usually like rip those off model cars as you buy them? How? Well, randomly, a selection. yeah, I did. Um, I did a project for HPI Racing, the race, the, the, the mm -hmm. professional RC car, cars. Okay, yeah. And they um, they supplied me with a box of uh, different toys, wheels. So these were off different ones, really. So and sometimes I do strip them off, like broken cars. I do strip them off as well. But you get different textures and different patterns to create create what you need to do. What you need to do, really. Now, so. I guess. The obvious question is, well, or sort of, how did you get to here? So you, how, yeah, can you explain, I don't know, did you, were you always an artist? Uh, how, from it is a north? frequently asked question. A number of things really. So I, being from the Midlands, yeah, being, being from Birmingham originally, <laughs> where I spoke like this a bit when I, when I was much younger. So yeah, so I, yeah, being from the Midlands, I've always been massively into car, like, my uncle was a car. He was a car. He was a car. He was a car. <laughs> and he was a car designer. So he he worked for 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 Rover for when I was when I was much younger. When I you know, talk, you know talking kind of eight, you know that kind of that age when you're quite you, you're kind of learning things. And my uncle was driving cars that he had designed or partly designed. That is really cool. And I was like, he had a Rover. Must have been a 75, might, 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 I can't remember, 45, 75, 400, 600, 600. And the wheels on it were, were he, he designed them. 
And it was the only the only set that was done. And I was like, I was like, my 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 mind went, that's amazing. I want to do that job. And so he was, uh, and we grew up with a with like a Rover family. Yeah, my my yeah my parents all had Rovers or or Metros or Rover Two Hundreds mm. or whatever. Because he was a director, so he could. He had multiple cars. Yeah. So he, you know, he could have eight cars out at a time or ten cars. And so we, as a family, we all grew up with the brand. When I was 15, 14, 15, we, all, we had to do work experience. And you had to either organise your own or you had companies come in and yeah. you can come, come and do this. So, and I asked my uncle, I said, look, could I come and shadow you and also my, my parents had taken me to to motorsports events like Donington's up no, I remember going to see Super Tourers at Donington you know, when you know Smokey Joe Wilkenhawk and proper like you know the Mondeos and N- Nigel Mansell oh, and Mondeo stuff, yeah. and yeah those kind of yeah that kind of era of Super Tourers I remember watching and I wanted to be at that point I wanted to be a car designer and I was good at drawing I right. was always good at art and I could draw kind of draw cars so yeah when I was f- 15 maybe, 14, 15. I went and did a week's work experience with my uncle. And he basically, he took me through the, and he said, right, here's a load of, here's a load of numbers, <laughs> internal numbers, ring them. Okay. And, and ring them and, and just say, you're, you're my nephew, you're with me, you're with Paul Davis. Find out, you know, see what they, you know, if they can have you, you know, cause he, he was busy. He was in yeah. meetings. Yeah. He didn't want me just sat with him at a desk. He was like, right, go. He's like, here's the phone book. Here's the phone. Get Good luck. <laughs> 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 I was like, okay. And so I just rang his bit and they were like, all oh, right, you, you and Paul, yeah, we've heard, you yeah, he must've said it in a meeting or something. Yeah, fine. Come down and yeah, I'll we'll come pick you up and we'll take you here. Yeah. And I went, I went into the design offices. I went on a test track in a Rover BR. Oh, nice. Yeah, remember the Rover 200 BRM with the orange grill? <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's kind of. Uh, but yeah, I did like I went on a test track in that. Whilst the new Mini was hadn't been released yet, and there was this car. I was like, oh, what? awesome! And I was like, I remember, I, I, I remember vividly my uncle sitting me in the new Mini before it had even been revealed to anywhere and he was like you can't talk about it <laughs> but this is the new mini and it ha- I remember the big red the big round like dash it's yeah yeah, yeah the and big star like, wow like this is but I, I also had to sign an NDA so I couldn't you couldn't, I couldn't tell, talk about your mates. I couldn't say anything so and you had to write a diary so my diary was like sorry I can't talk about this <laughs> Otherwise, that's perfect. I, he was like, I can't talk about this either because yeah, I've been you know, and because they trusted me as my uncle's. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was kind of like you're you, vetted. Yeah, yeah, you, you, it's okay. He won't talk about. It. So and I saw, yeah, it was all kinds of you know, draw. I remember we walking to the dining and there's this massive sheet of paper on the on the on the wall, and this guy drawing this this big. I think it must have been the the next gen Discovery. Okay, maybe yeah. at that point, and I was like, I was wowed by it, but then. There's also designers who had just done the grill, the fuel yeah. filler cap, the, and it was that was it. That's the indicators. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. What, and I remember I sat down with one guy, and and he, with that, that, at that point they had a, a mini exploded across the wall, like every part. It was like a car, like a Meccano piece. Oh yeah, yeah, sick. Like on the wall. I was like, oh, that's cool. And the guy, I meant this guy was really upset because he'd designed the engine bracket and be told it wasn't being used and then it had been used. <laughs> and he was like, I was like, you can't see it. I was like, it's underneath. Yeah, but it, yeah, but he might have spent six months. Exactly. On that. <laughs> he, that was his. That was his thing. So, so there was the one side of car design was this amazing thing of yeah, you were you were designing stuff at the same time. You, you, it's the tiny yeah you you design like little tiny part you know, parts mm. of the bigger picture and I, and I was like mm, is it is it creative enough for me is it is it like is it really what I really want to do and I said at school I was I was really good at art like I was probably <laughs> like yeah there's there's always like me and this one kid who was like oh who's gonna draw the better picture. I always drew the better picture. <laughs> you I was just good, better. I, I was you just better. Ah, like I, I was just that was my thing. I, yeah, I, I wasn't great at sport. I, yeah, I was plump. Yeah, I was a plump kid and whatever. So yeah, I, the one thing I knew I could do was I could do art and I could do it really well. So I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to go down the, 
the, the, the flip side of being in Birmingham and liking cars, your school teacher, yeah, they go, okay, so you're just going to go and work at the factory then? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't want to build cars. I want to... I want to design them. I want to design them. Yeah, so it's kind of... I'm not an engineer in terms of that. And so with my GCSEs, I got... I got A star and everything. A star art, A star textiles, A star graphics. Nice. I was the only kid in the entire school to ever do all three because I had dropped DT or something yeah. else. So I was like, no, I'm going to do all three arts, get A star across the board. Everything else I got C easy and I passed on. <laughs> everything, apart from French, I found that spectacularly. <laughs> Mainly because I couldn't, I couldn't understand the 24 hour clock. For, okay, and that, that was tested that, rigorously. 12 became 24. Yeah, and then it was like 11 minus. And, 11, and like, what do you mean 11 becomes like 30? Like, one becomes 30? Like, I just couldn't understand yeah. it. Normally. Never Normal mind. English. Never mind French. Never mind French. So, Fair French, enough. I failed brilliantly at. <laughs> but then I can say, Ali a la piscine. This is, yeah, go to the swimming pool. Swimming pool. And douche. Is, shower? Yeah, shower, yeah. And uh, um, turn, yeah, that's it. That's it. Done. Well done. Thanks. So clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I tend to waffle quite so a lot. So you're trying to work out, you've been and you've done some work experience and you're like, oh yeah, I quite like car stuff, but I don't necessarily want to design a bracket. No. Uh, you're quite good at art at school. Yeah, re- I'm good at art. I'm really, and like really good. Th- th- really good at art. Um, and, and looking around, he is really good, guys. <laughs> He's um, well good. Well, I'm more aware, yeah. Uh, so I had to get a C in, in maths. Maths, I had to get a C so that I didn't have to retake anything. Okay, yeah. So kids, if you're listening, get your C's, because then you don't have to retake them. Yeah, that's, that's you could also get a B or an A or oh, an A. Oh, yeah, whatever, yeah, exactly. I mean, above C. Yeah, I, 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 I was in the bottom group, I couldn't get any higher than C. <laughs> so, so I got what I needed to get, but it meant I could just go solely to an art school. Okay, yeah. So, and there was only one art school. I, was, I lived in Solihull. The only art school was in St. Carfield. So I then, so all my fre- like friends, school people, they all went to, they all went to Solihull, and I went to Sutton Carfield College mm. because it had a dedicated art school. So it was a stand away from the yeah. from from the main site, and I think it was really good for me because I, I I didn't particularly want to stay with the people that I was at school with. Yeah, I wanted to ha- break Watch out. Branch out and see, you know, and it meant I had to travel an hour on a train because you know didn't drive at that time, anything like that. So I travelled across the city, across yeah, you know, an hour, an hour and a bit across from Solihull through Birmingham to Sutton Coldfield every day, Sutton Coldfield College. At, at that point, I wasn't sure where. For me, I'd seen artists in art books, and I was like, well, surely that's a career somewhere. Yeah. If you've got an artist in, in your studying Warhol or Lichtenstein or. Yeah, any or whoever. You know, there, there was clearly they're an artist, and at some point they've made money somehow. Yeah, somehow from it. You know, whatever the way of doing it. So yeah, so I went to a dedicated art school at Sutton Carfield College. I mean, I met new people, and I, in fact, the travelling across from Birmingham through the city, I, I think I, it broadened my horizons mm. of what I was seeing every day, what I was taking in in terms of transport, travel, uh, that that journey, that kind of like. Every day on a train, you know, trying to get to places, yeah. or whatever. So yeah, I settled on doing illustration as a as a thing, yeah. Which is BTEC National Diploma in Illustration. At that point, there was no, you know, Max and stuff weren't really. A, you certainly didn't have one at home, yeah. Yeah, you know, and a lot of the stuff was very practical. Like you were painting, you were, you were replicating images. So you had an image, and you were told to paint it one and a half, two times bigger. Oh, okay. And it yeah. was like you yeah, grid it all up. Yeah, yeah. And repaint it. And that, I, I and, remember. And illustrate that and you know, the kind of creation illustration was very much a practical thing. There was no there was no computers. Hmm. There certainly wasn't any iPads or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was very much a manual labour way of creating. And I enjoyed it, but after a year of it, I kinda thought, I'm kinda yeah. done. And also all of a sudden there was a, a Mac suite or a uh, the, the computers became much more part of illustration, yeah. so it became much more of a graphics led. Okay, and yeah. I'm not. That's not your job. It's, that's not. It's just not my thing. Like I can do it. I, I'm better at it than I ever used to be. But it's not kind of you. Know, I want to be. I want to be covered in paint. Yeah. Like <laughs> you. Know, Ian is sitting there on the floor right now. <laughs> Part way through creating this, this artwork, completely covered. Yeah, so I, I wanted that kind of like very 
hands-on approach to it. And I think I soon found in that first year, it, it that wasn't the it was it was going one way, and that was much more graphics. Mm. And um, as much as I, I, I did a bit, a bit of graphics stuff, I was like, I don't want this to be my thing. My thing. It's not my thing. In that time, I walked past the fine art rooms, which are downstairs. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> what's going on in there? And there's weird people like charcoal and paint all over the place. And I was like, whatever that is, I... Get me some of that. Get, I want some of that. Yeah, if I can, I want to find out what that is. So I found out that there was a foundation course, which is generally what you do as a, from a, from a degree point of view, you do a foundation course first, and then you go on to do your degree. Mm. So you, you, as a so when I was at Sutton, I was six. You know, and I'm a young in my school year. I'm young, okay. like I'm an yeah. April birthday. So I'm like the tail, like the, the yeah. latter half. So so I was seven. You know, seventeen. So yeah, sixteen, seventeen. But all the people in foundation were 18, 19, mm. 20. Okay, plus. yeah. Yeah, and the mature Way students. Older. So I was like a 16 year old up against 18, 19 year olds. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is a challenge. And they were like, the literature teacher was like, you've got to prove yourself here. If you've, yeah. you've got to, yeah. You you're out. Literally, you are back to your, your illustration. Yeah. Plus, you've still got to do your illustration. <laughs> you've, still got to do, you've still got to hit all your course criteria here. If you want to do fine art, you've got a whole other criteria. Okay, to do. yeah. So you've got to do twice the amount of work. So you've got to do you've yeah. got to finish your illustration to get your illustration B Tech because that's what you're training in, and then you've also got to do your your fine art stuff mm. as well. I was like, okay, I'll give yeah. And my yeah, my my parents and my dad particularly yeah, has, uh, they've always been very very supportive. They've always been like there. Mm. So them being at shows with me now. They've always been there as a yeah you know, support again. Okay, support, yeah, right. yeah. If if you want to do it, you, you do it. But yeah, and art notoriously at kind of that level is expected because you've got to have all your own materials. You've got to fund, yeah. yeah, like and there's not a lot of funding for art. You've got to have your own materials, and yeah, if you've got an idea, you've got to be able to go. Okay, I want to make this or create this. Or. Is there quite a lot of pressure at that point because because you're paying for all your own materials and stuff like that? It's, you don't necessarily want to create something massive with crazy loads of stuff if you're not sure it's going to work out or do you there's a period of trying it and working on it yeah i think there's, there's a mixture like i think i've always wanted to kind of break the mold yeah. like even at school like even at gcc i remember the teacher going to me the homework is an a1 piece of an a1 piece and i'll bring back <laughs> yeah not an a1 be a4 and i'll, be like, I'll bring out back an a1 and he's like, oh, you've, you've not listened have you he said no no i've done it and i've done more <laughs> and, uh, and I, really I, I remember this this him at, like putting my dad going in and just going oh he hasn't he hasn't but that's a teacher like you, you can't a teacher can't tell off another teacher yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of like yeah it's kind of like they were, i remember this one teacher gets so frustrated with me because he was like i was doing more than i should have done yeah he was like, well, that's the r- I told you to do this, and you've done that. I'm like, yeah. yeah. My dad said it was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's probably always been a little bit of, I think, you know, I think if you're doing anything creative, like, like you know, yourself, like, you've got to, if you're putting yourself out, out there, you've got to have ultimate faith in, in what you're going what for. What you're doing, what you're going for. In many ways, you kind of reason that in your head. You kind of go, I'm doing this because of it, and it's... It, there's a, an output, you know, yeah. whether, you know, sometimes that may not completely work out, but you, you at least learn from it, and then the next time you're in a similar yeah, situation, you go, right, that's how I did it last time, this is how, this is how, this is how it works. What sort of things were you, were you painting at this point in time? So, yeah, I, I was, was it all, a mix? I, I had a year, so I had, I had a year, a year to kind of prove, you know, because I was put in that group, and I had to really show that I didn't just want to be an illustrator, I wanted to do fine art and and I didn't want to have to go and do I didn't want to have to go and do a foundation separately after my B Tech. Mm. So I wanted to go, right, I want to do this and jump a year. So I was I would be a year ahead of myself. Yeah. So I didn't have to do a bit of foundation and then go back and do foundation again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, right, okay, it's my chance to do foundation, have enough in my portfolio and go to uni- university. Straight away, yeah. University essentially a, a year early. Yeah, ideal. That's what I wanted to do. So, yeah, I, did, I just, I had fun. 
I had I, I had fun and but it was it was hard work mm. and and in back it, when uh, without sounding dull back in those days um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you still have it now but we had crits and the crits were savage a group of thirty people all competing against each other all with their own opinion like and they'll go in on you yeah. on you. And you'd be like, man. <laughs> this is my art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, this is what, this is what I've done this way. And they're like, why have you done that? And then, yeah, I remember the tutors being, I mean, there's another tutor called Ian. And he could be proper. Like, and, it, and that probably built, it built you up for taking that, that hit. That yeah. hit. That like, yeah, actually, not everybody's going to love what you do. It's just, just the way it is. It's a really good, like, yeah, uh, tough thing to go tough, through. And but. it's uh, that kind of tough love, that kind of, yeah, also, I'm not gonna, yeah, having a, an art teacher as a parent, he ain't gonna lie to me either. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he's not gonna say, mm, actually, fuck, what is it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's gonna be honest, yeah, and, and, I, and I did a lot of experimental stuff, and I mean, I think I, so my end piece, I based it on my journey because I was experiencing this hour-long journey. Yeah. Right so I based it on my journey. It was my journey from two, from sudden. But I built a train carriage out of MDF, this massive oh, big wow. wall piece that had like, kind of, <laughs> it was like this big abstract piece of, it looked like, but it had like wood coming out of it, perspex, and I, I put everything into it in terms of building and creating mm. and making this thing, as well as doing some really tight, accurate illustration to, hit my criteria okay yeah so I had these two two Some opposing different things yeah you know kind of things of you know, very fine art and ideas led to very structured this is what you've got you know an A2 A2 layout A1 layout of something like it was like a, a illustration of a bird of birds it was lovely it was a, it was a lovely piece but there, there were two very different things but I had to do it at the same time to hit the two criteria and get so essentially, my portfolio was fine art and illustration. Yeah. But then I applied to do fine art at university at Winchester. Yeah. Um, which I didn't think I'd get into. Plus, I wrote the wrong course code. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in between all this, with how university works, particularly with with, with art, you you went round route A and route B. So you wrote down the the, the universities you'd like to go to. Yeah. But you're probably not good enough to go to. It's like a long shot. Yeah, so. yeah. So you, I had Bath, Bath and Winchester mm -hmm. as my, or Bath, who you might say, depends. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, Bath Bar and Winchester as my route A's, uh, along with Cardiff, which is very new media at that time. So they were going down like the video route, okay. which I, I kind of went, mm, nah. It's, yeah, it's not right. your thing. Not my thing. And then I went Cheltenham and somewhere out, route, route B was something else. So I yeah. think it was. I think Winchester and Cardiff Route A and then uh, Bath and Cardiff Route B. And I went and visited all, all the universities where I wanted to go to as well. Mm. So I went and visited. And I, li I liked Winchester. I really liked the feel to it. And I, and I purposely went down on days that it wasn't student open days. Okay, yeah. So I went down and talked to the students and go, look, right, what is it like? Yeah. And Bath was, it was fine, but a lot of students were like, oh, it's a massive hill. <laughs> big hill. Oh. I kind of walk up that hill and I'm like, really? And a lot of the, pro the projects are walking up the hill. Or yeah. I was like, oh, don't, don't really fancy that. But we just had, had a, yeah, it didn't have a house style, but it was one of the best outside of London. Mm. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to get to London, go see the galleries and stuff, and start a gallery. Be in and, London. But not be in London. Because I didn't want to be in that race to be someone. Yeah. Or some, yeah, like I wanted to enjoy being at the university. Uh, yeah and be able to ac access to the galleries and Winchester was on the direct line to London so and it had just a real good feel to it like my, my grandparents took me down to all the the open days and whatever I very vividly remember being in my granddad's car and it, he always used to play like classic radio yeah yeah classic blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and the arches and whatever and I remember being in the car and being like Oh, could we just change that? Just, just change over to Radio One. Just, just, <laughs> just to break this up a little bit. And turned it over, and it was like Limp Biscuit came on. Oh right, yeah. And it was like you know, every other word was bleeped out. And it just remember him just like switching straight back. And like he was just like, no. It's like, okay. You ruined my chance, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> this could have been great. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is going to be a long journey. <laughs> yeah, but I was very grateful that yeah, they, they, I was able to 
to move the university, I applied for it, I put down a wrong course code, I applied for fashion, not fine art. They ran me back and said, your sta statement says it, you want to do fine art, you've applied for fashion, is that the case? I'm like, no, no, I want to be fine art. And then they ran me back and said, right, okay, well, you've got an interview and come and, Sweet. Come and apply. I remember that being an interview being really hard. Like it what is it? Because I I studied engineering, and I remember my my interview at Bristol. But what's a, an art interview like? Uh, so, yeah, you take all the work that you've done with you yeah. in your portfolio. Okay, yeah. And you you present it. And so this is the ideas behind it, the sketchbooks. This is why I did this. Did you take your train carriage? <laughs> no, <laughs> far too big. I, I can't. I, I think I took. I had some really great. Well, it's really great. I thought it was great. Um, I had some good charcoal pencil, like charcoal drawings, which like kind of folded out. Mm. And I think anything out of that, yeah, you, know, you had the A1, because you know, it was all in A1 folio, which was a mix of illustration and fine art stuff. But then it also went on to, um, you know, the, the bigger drawings that it, they were able to pull it out and then yeah that's quite cool kind of fold it out and it kind of filled not to fill mm. the room but it just it just looked Big. impressive I, had, I think I had photos of my final I don't it must have been before my final major so I had photos of what I was looking doing and whatever it, I remember it being very hard but I knew I'd, I'd done alright yeah I'd done alright yeah like didn't feel that I'd and you were going there for like the right reasons like you really wanted to do it uh, yeah, and I, I liked the city, and I, I knew I was, I was punching well above my weight. Like, I knew I was... At the end of the day, if I didn't get Winchester, I was like, well, I've got, I've, I've, I can always go to Bath. Mm. It says, you know, I, I like them both for different reasons. So, yeah, so I, I, I did went to the interview, and then I got a conditional off. I think everything else, every, everything else I had was unconditional. Yeah. And that was conditional. So I think it was conditional on merit or conditional on... On distinction, yeah, which I was online for anyway, so it just made me more determined to to do that, re yeah. really work hard and, and do it. And I got my dis I got my distinction both in, yeah, for illustration and with the fine art element to it as well. So so yeah, so I went down to Winchester and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just really, it was a really nice atmosphere, yeah, really nice vibe to it. And I think the year that we were there, there was thirty six of us in the year, and um, I think we all worked off each other in mm. many ways. And yeah, you know, we all wanted to push it and to push yeah. it and try new things and, and work off each other. I had a really good friend of mine who was who shared the studio with and we worked together really well. And even even the people yeah, because we had crits there and they were pretty harsh mm. on occasions as well. But I think most people wanted to to kind of help not help, but you know, support, yeah. go on. Together and yeah, you know, and I went down with I'll say I went down with a kind of thick Brummie accent and came out with this generic kind of <laughs> nondescript like, somewhere like, in the middle. Yeah, because yeah, I remember me and you going, "Oh Lord!" And they were like, "No, no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no! You can't, can't have that around here." But it's funny like when I'm at events now, like I really pick up, I really hear the Brummie accent. Yeah. So if I hear somebody talking, I'm like, first of all, where are you from? <laughs> or like, oh, guess which area of Birmingham they're from? They're like, are you from Solihull? <laughs> or are you from Dudley? Oh yeah, because it's it's a really when when you when you haven't got the twang, but you hear it, you can you've really fine tuned. You your... can you can be like, okay, they're they're not from Dudley, like because everybody thinks of Brummie accents. Oh Lord, how yeah. are you doing? And that's actually like black country, which is yeah. Dudley, probably what you see on um, Peaky Blinders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's that area. It's a very kind of North Birmingham. Thing, but at the same time, for like people from like Worcester, kind of have it because it's mm. it's it's that area of, of, yeah. of the Midlands. But yeah, no, I, I, I do find I do find the accent funny. I do, I do enjoy <laughs> enjoy hearing it, particularly when like you get some of the JLR engineers who are doing big speeches about like the new Defender, and it's yeah. like, oh, you know, like we like, <laughs> we like this car because uh, yeah, when we think other people will like it, out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, whenever, whenever I hear the accent, I'm just like, oh, it's nice. It's friendly. <laughs> it is friendly. It's friendly. Yes, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> Being in Cov, we don't. Cov doesn't really have an accent. It's it's right. a fair, but they have. They're very passionate about words. So the word batch, is, batch, batch is very Cov. Okay. Um, which is which is I would call a roll or like a bun. 
You would call it bun. They call it a batch. A bat, yeah. It's but it's very much this. Like if the further you go towards Leicester, it becomes something else. Birmingham, it's a roll. And if there's something in a roll, the, uh, yeah, it's just a bat. Like it's just a batch. It's just a batch. It's, a, it's 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 two buns. Put put together, and that is a that it's is a batch. It's a batch. And uh-huh. the, you know, I was over at Prescott, and the guy next to us said said batch, and I was like, Are "You from?" You're from Cardiff, and he goes, "No, Liverpool." <laughs> we just called it that as well. I was like, "No way!" And then I sat down at another table. This guy just arrived at Morgan Three Wheeler Road, and he sat down and said, "Batch" as well. And I was like, Are "You from Cardiff?" Like, "Yeah, I'm from Cardiff." It's just, yeah. But anyway, so there's, a, there's a side note on the on the the twangs of, the twangs of, of the city. In terms of university, I, I was there as, and as an 18 year old as well. Yeah, I was the young, so super young, one of the youngest in my year. Because I hadn't done the, because I hadn't yeah. done foundation, so you got ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. I think it just being with older people just made you more determined to because you're always sort of prove yourself a little bit. Yeah, because you're always the youngest, yeah, the younger one or the youngest. Or I felt I grew up quicker. Mm. Yeah, the advantage of, of not you know being eighteen and not having to do foundation, great. Yeah, it meant yeah I was always around older people, and then in the second year. I was able to go on exchange, so I went out, out to Latvia for three months. Oh, wow. Which is really cool. Why Latvia? Uh, so, I was meant to go out to the States, because I wanted to go out to Ro- Rhode Island. Yeah. Uh, and then it all kind of fell through, like the, the, the connection the they had, the, the, the Erasmus yeah. connection, and I think it was just, yeah, a huge amount of money as well. And, but the tutors had just come back from Riga, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you should go out. It's really cool. <laughs> it's a cool place." But you've got to fund it all yourself, and uh, and there's no and there's no kind of official link really as yet. But they're keen to have somebody. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, I'll do it. I'll see." I'll sp- and bear in mind, in Latvia at that time, it wasn't in the EU. Okay. Uh, it was, so it was its own country. It was still quite you know Soviet in many ways. Yeah. You know, like kind of. Because it was still finding its its identity from from being under Russian rule, mm. so you had you, know, you had Riga, and then above it is uh, Riga and, and Latvia, and above it is below it is Lithuania, above it is the Estonia, so the Baltic yeah. states, um, and it, there was a, the Riga Matklas Akademija, which is their their university of yeah. of Latvia, which is very like they, you are chosen to go there, like it's very hard. Because it's like the best drawing school, the best, you know, best yeah. place to go. So I kind of went over there, like, <laughs> oh, hey, hi guys. Uh, yeah, I, I do all, all this right, kind guys. Of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, and it was fascinating. It was a fascinating three months, and I think in that time, I learned so much about my, myself. My brother had previously been out to Latvia the previous year, so I'd heard about it from my brother because he'd been out to to to. A, a place hmm. nearby. I, I was like, cool, re- yeah, it sounded good. Um, and yeah, it was amazing to learn some really kind of old school drawing techniques. Like, yeah, they had a uh, life drawing, and yeah. yeah, but it was like, yeah, it was very strict, very, very strict. And I started to, to do some stuff like I was painting cars white and then sending them back to people to decorate. Okay. So I started to go down this kind of art car route. Because what I noticed out there is this thing called Jackie cars, which are like really badly pimped okay. old cars. Like badly, yeah, they'd be on hydraulics yeah. or... And I was like, I started to notice this car, because I was living in a city. Like I'd never lit. Winchester's not, yeah, it's, it's a city, but it's, yeah, come on. Yeah. It's, it's a not quaint, quite. quaint, lovely British. But living in a, in a equivalent of, yeah, of London, but in Latvia, you're surrounded by car, like cars and trams and noise, and yeah, we were in, a, in like a kind of a hostelly place, looking down over the main city, and you just see cars that sometimes stayed there for a couple of days, sometimes one car just stayed for there for the whole time, <laughs> didn't move, got tickety, got clamped, yeah. got broken into. It's, I was because I was I was down there during the winter, like. It, I didn't realise the car was actually a flower. They sold flowers out the back of it. That's why. Okay. It that's why, and because yeah. it was seasonal, there was no flowers. <laughs> so, um, but there's things like I'd never seen like an infinity before. 
I okay, think the yeah. first time out there was like Infinity. So I was like, what's an Infinity? <laughs> like it's cool. It's a cool looking. Like at that time, it was a. You don't see many Infinities generally, anyway. Yeah, the, because yeah, but it was because of the, where it was, where it was, and Russia, and the Infinity was a brand at that time. And so you saw this kind of curvy big SUV. I was like, never seen one of these before. At the same time, we saw all the. You saw some really amazing cars, like yeah, you know, like you know, the Quattro, Audis, and expensive stuff. But then, because in the city centre, it was like yeah, you know, it was wealth. Yeah. It was a lot of wealth. So you saw a lot of really nice cars, Porsches, etc. Yeah. And you saw really bad cars as well. <laughs> so yeah, so, so I started to do this thing of sending. What cars, size cars? Like little ones, little, little, little ones, like, ones. Like, yeah, kind of, and get people to decorate them and make yeah. them into things and go and store it. And then I had another thing where. So what I, what I really related to was Land Rover. And being from Solihull, Land Rover was from where I was mm. from. And, I, and I, it kind of blew my mind a little bit that Land Rovers were in Riga. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's a Land Rover. That's a Range Rover. That's built. I'm, I'm, yeah. from that city, I'm from Solihull where that's built. So I started to kind of associate Land Rover and my travels to Land Rovers yeah. and getting hold of models of Land Rovers and stuff. So what another thing I was doing is, uh, is I got Bur like Burago cars, like the cheap model cars, yeah. and I'd go on journeys and I'd get people to sign the Land Rover and say, yeah, sign it, and then say who they were, where they're from, and something. Yeah, it did, so it was, it was quite, it's quite, it's quite interesting. And I got, and I did loads of them. I did, I did. It, like easily 50 of them like yeah. the sign cars oh loads yeah and yeah like so I'd be going through the airport and I'd get the the person stamping my passport like you just sign the car oh okay. nice that's quite fun uh, and then you know I was at, whilst I was purely yeah, the Finnish ice hockey team were there I got, I got them all to sign it <laughs> and um, it was quite an interesting thing so this kind of travel and cars and that's what I think that's, that's where it first kind of came into my artwork hmm. was cars and art and mod, you know, doing something arty with cars. So that was, what, 2003? Three, 2002, 2003. And I brought all this stuff back to, to, to Winchester. Really excited. I've oh, done all this thing, and concept stuff, and a bit of drawing, and whatever. And my lecturers were just like, hmm, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, it's a 2-2. It's a, it's a I was like, what do, what do you mean? She was like, yeah, it's all right. Mm. So it's okay. Yeah, you, you, you've passed this year. And I was like, I was devastated. I was yeah. like, I've passed. <laughs> I thought you smashed mean? it. I was like, I thought I've done, like, I had an amazing time out there. I traveled, saw met loads of amazing people. Things like the Iraq war started whilst I was there. Yeah. And all we had was radio. We didn't really have, we had dial-up internet, but it was like terrible internet. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, oh, what do you think to it? I'm like, I don't, I, I don't know, because I can't see, you can't see it, I don't know, I don't, I, oh, but you're British, I'm like, I, I, <laughs> nothing to do with me, yeah. <laughs> you know? so it was a fascinating time, and I'm, I'm really glad I went and did it, and I, and I saw, and I saw some brilliant things, and met some lovely, lovely people, and it was, it was interesting being, because it wasn't in the EU at that time, there wasn't that many Brits out there, Yeah. so it was kind of like, you had, you know, you, I, I'm terrible at learning languages, so I just got, yeah, but I was able to be with, you know, Portuguese, American, Italian, Finnish, uh, French guys, and we just had a, a, a great, a great three months of just learning. Uh, and, I, you know, I, grew, I felt, I grew up again um, whilst out there. But yeah, well, coming back, it just, it, it was like, it just didn't, the work there didn't translate well to the what was going on at uni. What going on here, yeah. It just didn't translate. And I don't know what, you know, the ideas and cars that I had were, I thought were really strong. Yeah. Um, but it just didn't. Didn't work. Didn't yeah. work as a, as a, as a thing. And then, and then the third year at uni is hard. Like the third year is, you know, it, it was, it was proper. It, it, yeah, you people who thought you were friends, all of a sudden you were like, oh, Oh, you, we're up against each other. And what happened is I, um, I, was, I was working part-time and I came back and I basically, I, I was working part-time to f help fund stuff, my equipment, my materials, mm. um, everything. Uh, and I came back and the guy who I trained up had taken my job. Oh. So I was like, oh, so I've got, and so I, 
I then started to work. I, I started to work in bars. I, I worked in. I just worked in Wethersfield mm. because I went from working in, in retail to going right. Okay, I'll try working in in pubs. Yeah, yeah, it's a social thing and whatever. And actually, it took it took my mind off the world of painting and creating mm. and being an art. Yeah, because I was doing this job which was nothing to do with my day life. Yeah, yeah, it was like having a night. Yeah, because it was you work at the gym at night. I was able to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, something. Did you find it must be well, like anyone really? If you hang out with the same people all the time, or if you're hang, you're deeply in like an arty type community, you just end up in this like bubble, yeah, whirlwind of art bubble. So, same, like, and it can be the same like here. Like, it's a wonderful place to be. I, I love being where I am now. At the same time, you need to have that set the set, Not that, yeah. separation. If everything around you is what you solely do it soon become it, yeah it becomes work or oh, i've got to go do that whereas the joy of what i do now is i get to go to events and i get to paint in different places i get to meet people and it's it, it's lovely that i can take my job to somewhere and have a completely different surroundings atmosphere whatever because of how it how how I've designed it to be movable. Yeah. I think the first time I came across you, I, I, I've seen you on Instagram or the internet, I don't know how, how long ago, it was a long time ago, um, but I saw you at Autosport and it was way, way, way back. Yeah, yeah. And it was the first time I'd seen some automotive art based type stuff. But the big thing about you that most people that have come across you will see is at every event you're at, it's not just your art on the wall. You are always creating stuff at the event. So you get to see this process that you go through. And you've got all these little remote controls cars that you're playing with and doing it all with. It's just a really cool, like, involving experience for the audience, along with being able to see the final result, which is cool. But seeing the whole process really adds to that, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, it's, it's an installation. Like, every mm. show I do, like, because my, my final degree show, was called Pop Bang Color. Yeah, all my toy cars. Why, are, why Pop Bang Color? Where was that so name come Pop from? Pop Bang is a friendly explosion of color. That's where the name yeah. comes from. So in, in my final year, again, we had some, I mean, I, I had some terrible crits. Like, yeah, there was some, even kids from other printmaking sculpture came yeah. into my presentation. And I was like, what are they, what are they doing here? And it was just solely just to, just to pick at <laughs> whatever they thought they didn't like. And I was like, jeez, give me a break. And I remember this one guy, so I got so so involved with Land Rover, so involved in it being a brand, mm. a brand from where I'm from. And a kid from printmaking was also from Sally Hall. So he in the, in the crit stood up and said, well, I'm from Sally Hall as well and I don't care. I was like, dude. I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? Why are you here? He's like, yeah, yeah, means nothing to me. Yeah, this is just, you know. And he goes, and I think you're being paid by Land Rover. Look, look, look at you with your brand, you know, with your t shirt on, and they're giving you all this stuff for free. I'm like, no, 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 this is, you're massively misreading all of this. Um, so I had a conversation with a guy who, who happened to be from Stourbridge, uh, and he was a year above me. And he went, he went, is it about cars in, or is it about, is it actually about colour and enjoyment of colour? And if you just break it down into, into colour, then it's not about cars. Cars happens to be the theme, mm. but it's not about a particular brand. I was like, okay, and, he's, and it was kind of like, okay, yeah, I get you. And so he says, if you're so into cars from your childhood, embrace that, go, go with that. Don't go with a particular brand. Because yeah. I also wrote my dissertation on how the Land Rovers feature in films. Ah, okay, yeah. So the role of a Land Rover in a film, mm. how does that, yeah, how does a baddie look bad in a Range Rover? How does a goodie look yeah. good when they're exploring a forest in a Defender? So there was also my dissertation yeah, yeah. I wrote on Land Rovers. So I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up cutting up all my toy cars, I own skeletal cars, model cars, mm. everything I, I ended up cutting them all up by colour and creating a a a, um, a sculpture 
Which now is Which is stupid. over there. I'm going to turn my webcam out. And <laughs> you'll just about see it. There's over here. So you, you cut up all your toy cars and turn it into a... Everything. The only thing I didn't is that to your right, to your left, you've got, there's an Italia 90 Testarossa on the desk. An Italia 90. Yes, test. yes. That is the only, for some reason I don't know why I didn't cut that one up, but that is the only, only one I did. Surviving one. So it's the only surviving toy from my childhood. Yeah, so I, in, in that sculpture, there's pre-production stuff that I was getting directly from the oh, okay. designers. Cool. So there was like, there's, yeah, you could say priceless toy cut. Yeah. But at the same time, I see it as that's a sculpture that I can still look at and enjoy. Yeah. I would never. I would never. In I would never have kept them as as pristine toy cars, and that's where they are. They're in. The, they're in the sculpture. So yes, yeah, so it was just based on yellow, blue. You know, if you if the car was bits of black, blue, red, green, whatever. Mm. Uh, we created the sculpture, and it took six months to build. So it was like. Literally dri taking the car apart and then Dremel drill, like cutting the car up into sections, yeah. and then drilling a hole into the part and then wiring it onto it like a almost like a flowery bloom. And it, yeah, so it took six months for, and, and working like from eight, eight kind of early wow. o'clock till late to get everything. And I also kept like all the boxes, I kept all the boxes that I had, cut them up into sections and that became another part of the, so the whole, the whole piece, the whole like installation was like, you walked in and in that thing, you also got skeletric motors and lights. Yeah. So you walked in and it made like, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. and the bottom bit rotated. And so it kind of like you walked up to it, it kind of made noises. Mm, it's quite so cool. It was kind of like, you know, so it was, it was yeah. oh, I didn't, I didn't drive at that time, so I wanted that, I, what I was aiming for was the aim of, um, of having what you experience when you're driving, so you have like sounds, lights, noise, you know, the senses, uh, the only thing I didn't have was smell, but the senses of what you would experience when mm. in or around yeah, yeah. Uh, movement and whatever. So, um, and it's hung in the central, in the, in the middle of a room, so this was the central piece, and then you had wall pieces that connected back to the central piece mm -hmm. as well. Um, and the, yeah, I, it was it, there was lots of sketchbooks and yeah, me yeah, why? What one of the things by working early and late is that I generally met all my tutors. Okay. Because they would come in early, so a lot of the other guys who were really didn't come in until ten. Then didn't but see them. Yeah. I was in at seven thirty in the morning, so. The, the tutors would walk around and go, okay, what you thought about this or whatever. So when it came to the marking it, they'd all they'd all talk to me about it beforehand about yeah. what about it or they knew what I was. Yeah, and some of them I'd, I'd taken not ta I'd taken on the ideas or I'd gone, okay, yeah, I think about that or yeah. whatever. So they, they all kind of knew what what I was planning with it, and I managed to to, to have a sort of room dedicated. Yeah, it was my own room, so. And, I, and I, I did a lot of work in the room to make, so I filled in all the holes and I made sure the walls were perfect and I took the metal back, so that where you paint, painted over the metal work, mm. I took it back to metal so that okay. all these materials were the original materials of the room as well. So when, when, when you talk about at a show, like I always see it as I'm putting on an installation, yeah, when, if somebody walks in, I want them to go, oh, Okay. Ooh, what's this? What's yeah. it? Like, oh, oh. And that's why all the cars are on upside down, because, yeah, that whole thing of, <laughs> like, when you go, oh, they're all, they're all on. Yeah, it's, it's that thing of it. See, they may not engage with me, talk to me, but they'll, they'll certainly stick around and try. Yeah, you can see them. If they haven't seen me before, you can see that kind of idea of how, what's going on? I see cars. He's covered in paint. He's on the floor. He's got a remote. He's got a remote. Like Forty cars. Where are the paint brushes? <laughs> like where? Are the, no, the car. The car's got the paint on it. He's painted, and then they see the hashtag paint with car. Oh, he's painting with cars. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, I still don't get it. Right. <laughs> so it, it's kind of like you're making this 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 kind of um, almost like an equate an equation. Mm. Yeah. We, you and wherever I am, whether that's in a shopping centre at Goodwood, um, in here, like. Yeah, my my now wife met me in here, oh. and she walked in, and she was like, "What? 
what what is this place? <laughs> yeah, like you can see again. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, first of all, I, I don't jump. I don't go. Oh, hi, hey, how you doing? I let people engage with it, and if they want to talk, if they want to talk about it, they will. Yeah, um, and that's what I want people to do, is, is them to and to ask the question. Rather than going, trying to go, this is what it is. It's it's kind of working out what they're seeing. And some people come in and they go, oh, is it a toy shop? I'm like, Could no, be. Could be, <laughs> but it's not. But it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so it's 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 really. Uh, what's what's nice about here is I can when I've got the door open, I can hear people talking outside. Oh, that's the guy. Has we cut? No. <laughs> you, you're gonna hear like. People going, I, I don't, believe, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that, that's always where where what because I think I started off with doing a painting degree, being an illustrator who did a painting degree, but actually ended up creating a sculpture as his final piece. It's kind of it's always been like that. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, all, yeah it's, it's never been. I'm just a painter. I'm yeah. I'm a sculpt. I can't. If somebody wants me to sculpt or do something a bit different, then I can. And I think that's where you know stuff over the years that I've done helps with my. The, 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 it's a very fine art thought process. Yeah. I don't see myself particularly as a fine artist. Hmm. I see myself as an automotive artist that paints. I don't. I don't need to have a big explanation of something for people to read or engage with to get a pre-idea of what I do. What you do, yeah. You're an automotive artist that paints. Yeah. Yeah. And, and cars is the theme. I do bikes, I do other things, but predominantly it'll always be, be cars. Because that's my passion. Yeah. So that's and it's very evident being in this room that you are super passionate about cars. Because there is, are cars absolutely <laughs> everywhere I walked in and we've got this massive scale electric track going around one side and then all the walls are covered in most of your artwork in either print form or large format we've got stuff hanging from the ceilings we've got bits of bodywork where did the bits of bodywork come from? Uh, uh, so I've been, yeah, I've been doing this for, for, for uh, 2006 Seven, 2007 I started doing it yeah probably 2008 really um, 2006, uh, over the years I've just worked for multiple manufacturers doing different things I'm fortunate enough to be in places you go oh I, I'll probably never experience this again mm. or I'll never be here again and I'll savour being here yeah and enjoying that moment of doing this for yeah. this client or whoever and so yeah I was <laughs> I was at, at RML who used to produce all the touring cars for Chevrolet. Okay. Both yeah. Chevrolet World Touring Car and British Touring Car mm. at that time. Because at one point they were British Touring Car and World Touring Car champions in the same year. 2009? Mm. 10? 10 maybe. 10. It'll tell you on that poster over there. Might be two, yeah, the Chevy. Uh, 2000. 2000. Yeah. So the next one across from it. So bottom line down. Third, one in the middle, a blue car. Oh, 2010. 10. Yeah. Um, so I was paint. So I, I I was asked to create at the Chevrolet Spark. You know that very well known, <laughs> beautiful car, little yeah. little uh, little car that they produced. But Craig, who was their PR guy, Craig Craig Cheatham, brilliant PR guy. Like he never had any budget, but he wanted to do cool stuff, mm. and he knew that if he could try and do cool stuff. His cars might end up on the front cover of Auto Express, yeah. Auto Car, whatever. Yeah, this is before I did any kind of press launches. I just, I, I attended one as, yeah. a, as doing what I did. So they asked me to paint in the, the race bay down at RML. So I painted the Chevrolet Spark down at RML, creating this. So, you know, they had journalists coming out and watch me paint and whatever. And, um, and part of that was, I noticed outside they had a parts bin, like yeah. outside yeah, yeah. stuff. Like, yeah, these cars used to crash quite a lot because you yeah. had three or four in world touring car, two, at least two in British touring car, yeah. most weekends. And as you know, with touring car, it's... There's a lot of contact. There's a fair bit of contact. It's not It's not exactly a non-contact sport. <laughs> so yeah, so I was, I was there and... Um, I said to the the lady who ran the team or ran the race team at least, I said, 
I get you know if you get rid of the parts, I'll I'll take them. I'll come down and take. I'll, you know, if if you don't want them, it's just like oh, well, wait 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 till the end of the season and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll hook you up. Yeah, so I, 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 I've pretty much got a whole Chevrolet cruise in parts by the, by the roof. <laughs> I've got doors, I've got front and rears, I've got splitters. Oh yeah, I've just noticed the, the rest of the car. Yeah. There's, there's Quite a significant <laughs> impact on the... <laughs> yeah, that was, done at Sil- that was <laughs> rear-ended at Silverstone. I know the guy who did all the uh, wrapping of the cars, hmm. the race finals, was really impressed that his race finals didn't, didn't oh, come didn't off like or anything, they, yeah. they literally stayed where the, where the car got rear-ended. <laughs> There's a panel over there, which was a world touring car which caught fire on the first lap <laughs> at Brands. Okay. And the team just had, like, they were just, and it was a guest driver flown in from Brazil to race the car at Brands Hatch. Oh dear. Caught fire first lap. And so the bonnet over there has got half of it is like charcoal. Because yeah. <laughs> it's just like where, but that's, yeah, yeah that's why people who walk in here go, oh, is that? Oh, that must be the front of that year. Yeah. How did you? <laughs> and then there's there's a Ford GT front end up here as well. All oh, right. Yeah, I can't see that. From a, from a yeah. Ford, so from a 2000, uh, 2006. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see it. Ford yeah, white with a with a blue stripe. Uh, and it's another a client of mine who who looks after all the GTs in Europe. Mm. So GT 101 down in down in yeah. Kent. That, down that way. And yeah, so I, I dropped off, I was dropping off an artwork and there was a, a bananaed GT. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what's, what's this? <laughs> and he was like, oh yeah, it, it, it got involved in an accident over in Poland. And that's, the car had been shipped back yeah. to the UK to be repaired. They'd got a new chassis. And I said, what, what about the front bit? Is that, what's happening there? And he said, oh, if you, if he's happy for you to have it, then you can have it. <laughs> and so he then gave me the front, the front bit because it's like stone chipped and, and all sorts. Yeah, yeah. So, so many. I, I hadn't really thought about that, but whenever I'm at the racetrack, and if it's like a GT weekend or whatever, the amount of bits of cars that literally just get put in bins, yeah, like all over the place. Yeah, I know it probably looks like I hoard a lot, but I, and I do. <laughs> uh, only on Hot Wheels though. Some things I just like. Oh, that's that's a nice it's something a memory of that, yeah. or it's a, yeah part of that event. Like I've got all my lanyards from launches and stuff. Keep. Do you know? Have any idea how many artworks you've created? At events it's about and stuff. Five, it's over five hundred. <whistles> so twelve, thirteen years. Generally, if you're creating fifty-ish a year, yeah. so. So based, you know, so fifty based on twelve years. Plus, you know, sometimes I, if I'm commissioned by a manufacturer and it's a particular thing like logos, yeah, I did a, yeah. a, a one for Mercedes Benz vans. That was a lot of logos. Um, so it's not always, it's not always, car, you know, vehicles. It can be, mm. it can be other other things, which is always exciting. Is it? And then throw into that also, you've got. Stuff like the Guinness World Record and yeah, the Guinness World Record. I missed this. So yeah, so Guinness World Record was 2015. Yeah. So the, the how how it all all began really is one. I I got a radio control car as a Christmas present. Right. I was told don't take down the studio and don't get paint on it, <laughs> which is Lightning McQueen from the film Cars, which is that and that car is there on the on the. Pillow. All right. Yeah. That's how it started. So I did what I. Told not told. to. And I took it down to the studio and started, tried to work out how to paint with the car. Right. So do I put paint onto the wheels or put paint onto the, how do I go about painting with a car? And then I once worked out how, how to do it, which is put the paint down and then the car runs through it. Uh, I started doing color wheels. Um, so this is kind of 2006, seven. Mm. I thought, oh, how do I get this out there? Yeah, how do we go about? Yeah. So I, I painted in a shopping centre in Wolverhampton, and they gave me they just gave me a unit to use to because it was it was two thousand eight was when the the money left yeah, the world yeah. financial uh, crash financial crash, so um, a lot of the shops just went just you know shut up overnight or whatever. So and Wolverhampton wanted to have Britain in blue, so they wanted to look like they were colourful and fun yeah. and they were being active with their vacant, vacant shop units so I, I took over a shop unit in Wolverhampton and I started to paint it gave me space to create something like my mm. studio at home was tiny like it, it was I don't know a quarter the size of this space yeah. easily so I went and painted with with 
cars in the in the shopping centre. Uh, and then I also rang up all the I rang up all the media outlets. So at that time there was no really there was no Facebook it was just about around. There wasn't any Twitter, there wasn't any Instagram, no, any of that kind none of, of this stuff. None yeah. of that stuff. It was very much about get it into a written you know, into written media. Mm. Like you know, people used to buy newspapers or yeah, you know, and there was always local papers. And how it worked, I found out, was if you got into like the local paper, if the story was getting enough hits or interesting or, or quirky, which I fit yeah. into, then it would be fed onto the bigger. Yeah. So I got into the like the Wolverhampton Express and Star. And I, and I got a feature in that, which then led on to going into the Metro newspaper, which was then on page three of Metro newspaper, which was then going down to London. So at that time, I was teaching as well. So in my non-teaching time, I was doing this. Um, and I, I managed to get into the, the Metro newspaper and the kids were coming back to me at the college going, uh, you're in a newspaper. <laughs> cool. What's going on? I was like, yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, oh, I want a bit more of this. Yeah, so I, I started teaching. To, so I was a barman for a couple of years after after uni. I went, did bar work, which was great. I needed a break from art. Yeah. I, I needed after uni. I'd, I'd put everything into it, and I just needed to yeah, get a time clear, out. Yeah. Time out. Clear my head. I then was working in a nightclub. So I was the bar manager for, mm-hmm. for a nightclub. And I found out the DJs couldn't photograph themselves in the, in the, in the booth. Okay, yeah. So I, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll bring my camera in, I'll, I'll photograph you in the booth. And one of those DJs then used my image as his CD cover. Okay. And I was like, this is cool. Well, this is interesting. Not, not really where I want to be, but it's yeah. interesting. So, and, I, and I went and bought the, the CD from HV at that time. I was like, this is my art, and I said to my manager, look, this is my artwork. And he was like, why are you, why are you working the bar then? Like, if that's what you want to do, you should, you should go really do it. Go, do, go do it. However you want to do it, do it. But I don't think bar work is for you. Plus my handwriting's terrible, so <laughs> people couldn't understand my, like when I was writing orders down for food, <laughs> could not understand it. So yeah, so I approached my colleagues that I got my, my BTEC from, and said, look, if you want a visiting teacher, if you want a part-time teacher, I'll, I'm quite happy to try it. Yeah. And you know, if I've got to do a teaching qualification, I will. But I was never in it to be a teacher. Yeah. It was more the facilities. Like I was able yeah, access to access to all the stuff. Access yeah. to stuff. It was a more creative thing in bar work. It was like I was being creative at least. So yeah, when when I wasn't teaching, I was able to use the facilities and printmaking and. And the, the the paper that I use now, I found out from from there. From there, and when the studios weren't being used by students during the summer, I was able to to go into the the studios and take over the studios. And I also then started to teach. So I, I, I taught the young kids, but also I then taught foundation. So I taught the level that I wanted. The ones who were like sponges, yeah, yeah. Like you can mold them Absorbing into. It. Yeah, they kind of soaked it in, and you can mold that. You can mold them into what you wanted to do. And I taught them, and I was like, "Look, I'm an artist, and I'm trying out this. This is this is a technique I'm going to go with." And some of them are like, "Sir, so you're like what? <laughs> like, <laughs> you do what?" And then some of them are like, "Okay, this is cool." And then, then I got that first bit of media with, with Wolverhampton, and I kept. I was like, "Right, how do I keep this going?" So I approached. Children Need with Pudsey Bear. Yeah. So I approached BBC to do to paint Pudsey Bear live on Breakfast Radio, mm. which is a very unvisual <laughs> thing. So yeah, so I painted Pudsey Bear. That kept it going a little bit more. It got, I think it got onto the BBC, like when they did their round of a Children Need locally, it got onto there. Um, and then I started to do a lot more, I started to do events. So I started at the Heritage, at Gaydon at the Heritage Centre. Yeah. And I approached them and said, look, I could do this live. I could do this as a performance for something. And that year was the launch of, it was the year of the Land Rover. It was a Go 60. So it was the anniversary of Land Rover. Mm. So I said, okay, I'll come and paint at your event. And uh, I painted 
Land Rovers. So Land Rovers were one of our first artwork, and it kind of linked because obviously being from the city and you know, yeah, it was a link to yeah, my uncle well. and um, and whatnot. I think my uncle was involved somehow. I think he said, "I'll oh, you know, get in to do it." I, I don't know. So I, I went and did that, and that's where the first car artworks kind of came from. I also had a solo show just before then, and I did I'd done a side profile of so the the Honda Civic Type R, which is over there. Mm-hmm. That's the very first car artwork, and that was done for Auto Express magazine cover. Oh, right, yeah. So that was in kind of April, mm. early April time. So I, I kept at it. I had the solo show, which went really well, and so I had Auto Express come and do a feature, they time-lapsed it, and then I did Land Rover, and I started to go through the events calendar to see what yeah, other events, be, yeah. like, what, what, what is there? And there was this event called Goodwood, Festival of Speed, and I was like, I'd never been to it. So I was like, I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's in, you know, it was in you know, Autosport magazine, Motorsport magazine, like all the yeah. major. It's in everywhere. Yeah, it's in everywhere. I was like, well, what, what is it? So I approached him and said, look, you want me at your, you want me at your show? <laughs> Yeah, I need this space. And they said, well, how much are you going to cost? And I was like, oh, are you going to pay me? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Right. And it was, I think it was like 800 quid. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a huge amount of money. It was, yeah. So it was just a, a, a fee. I remember going down and I got there and I was like, oh, oh, it's big <laughs> this is a this, serious event this is a serious yeah because I think it was still, I was still teaching so I, I had to do my certain amount of hours mm. but I think I had Friday off or something yeah because it wasn't the moving motor show at that time so it was, I think it was just the Saturday Sunday I think still I, might have done I think I went on Thursday night actually so on the Friday I was there on my own and I was like oh this is so much bigger than I thought <laughs> than anything else I've been at before because I've done Bewley as well. But to get to Goodwood, I, I, I painted a portrait. And so I sent that to Goodwood, and Goodwood said, yeah, we want a portrait of Lord March then. Okay. As you did a portrait of Lord Montague, yeah. we want a por- por- portrait of the then Lord March. So I was like, okay. So, and that year was Hawthorne to Hamilton as well. So it was Mike Hawthorne to Lewis yeah. Hamilton. Lewis was halfway through his season with Massa, where they were like, fuck, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah at it. And so I, I painted... Hawthorne on the Friday and then I painted a portrait of Lewis Hamilton and then I painted Lewis's car and they were very particular about what images to, to paint because yeah. it was what well, it had to be on brand so I I painted a portrait the painted some, and then painted a portrait and then on the Tuesday following Tuesday it went really well amazing event brought all the artwork back photographed it all went back to the local press and said look here's a portrait of Lewis Hamilton I painted mm. and then I was teaching and my boss came in. They're like, "Oh, we've we've had uh, we've had MC Sarchi on the phone." I'm like, what? They want to talk to you about the portrait. And I thought, I'm in trouble. I was like, <laughs> somebody's. I've I've clearly done something. I've done something wrong. There's someone else. Somebody is not happy with what I've done because obviously, caught, like at that time, I had no idea what a corporate commission. Yeah, yeah. Well, I literally, I had no idea. So. I was like, oh, okay. And uh, so I rang him and I said, oh, hi, uh, you, you rang? I was teaching at the time, how can I help? And they were like, yeah, so we, they were like, one of, our, one of our team members saw you at, at Goodwood. We wondered how big you could paint. I said, well, how big do you want it? Like, well, they were like, well, because they're quite vague, PR, yeah, yeah. quite vague. We don't know at the moment, but we just want to, would you consider doing it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, blah, whatever, yeah. I thought it was wind-up. So I was like, yeah, whatever, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't mind. You're one of five ideas, we'll come back to you. Yeah. Okay. And then, it, yeah, go, a couple of weeks go by, ring me again, right, you're now one of three ideas. Like, so how, how, could you come down to our offices and talk us through what you do, and we'll work out how big you think you can paint. <laughs> so, right, fine. Go to the offices, uh, Golden, Golden Square, is it in London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just behind... With the table tennis tables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Golden Square, the Saatchi offices are there. So I walk in, I'm like, you all right? I'm kind of like, not having any idea what's going on. Um, I'm like, all right, so could you, how, how big do you think you go? I said, well, paste out the offices. I said, and like 12 has always been like a lucky number. Yeah. So 12, 12 meters <laughs> by eight meters. Yeah. I think. Yeah, based on what we Why could, not, yeah. Why not? They're like, okay, yeah, we'll do that. And 
I know it, and I literally went back home and went to dad and said, how big is 12 metres? <laughs> like, how big, you know, I have no idea how big it is. And then we worked out, and then, then, then it became down to two ideas. And they're like, right, we're gonna do this, and we're gonna do it out in Brazil. And I'm like, what? Are you, I was like, I was like are you, is this serious? And then it couldn't happen out in Brazil because of security. Eventually I ended up painting a 12 metre by eight metre sized portrait of Lewis Hamilton for Reebok uh, in the run-up to the Brazilian Grand Prix. Sick. So, so yeah, and it was done in done in on Regent Street, which is now the Nespresso store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that shop, uh, and I painted it over six days, creating for Reebok. So it's all branded up. Hmm. It remain. I think it still remains Reebok's most successful advertising campaign. Awesome. They ever they did. So it hung next to Tower in a run-up to the Brazilian Grand Prix. How do you, what do you even do with something that big after you've finished it? Like, can you just roll it up? Yeah, it's rolled up in my garage at home. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was it was talked about because it was it was um, it was quite. The problem is, is that what do you do? Because yeah, it was so big, and like, do you just does each square, some squares would have just been blue? Yeah, some squares just been yellow because it's just like if you cut it up, you couldn't really tell. So. They, they didn't really know what to do with it because it, it was kind of like it, it went beyond their expectations Yeah. and they didn't really know what to do with it after. <laughs> so, but it was, yeah, and it was, that was the first corporate That's really cool. thing I ever, and I, it was, I, I literally treated it like it was a wind up. I, I thought, because they showed me around the studio yeah. area a week before by flashlight going, yeah, here's where you're going to paint <laughs> and we're going to nick the electricity from next door and I was like, I was like, what? I was like, this, this isn't serious. It literally got global, a global reach, you know, so prior to all the social channels being there. Mm. And also at that time, there was lots of, you know, bad things with money happening and people, I think people wanted something a bit lighter. Yeah. It kind of just hit some, some you know, kind of- The right point at the, the right, right time. The right point, and you know, when you have a news channel and they go, I'm here on a lighter note, yeah. here's yeah. this massive artwork being painted. So yeah, so that was, that was 2008. So it was then shown to Lewis out in uh, Brazil. He then won, so he was crown world champ. And this artwork was up by yeah. up by Tower Bridge. And it was like a whirlwind. The, the Monday after that, I was back to teaching. <laughs> and I was like, and my, my students were like, sir, like, what happened? What happened there? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it happened. It happened. I I'm still very tired. I don't <laughs> I don't know what happened there. So yeah, and then I just, I continued to do events on a, small, on a much smaller scale, but then I was able to go full time. So prior to this, I'd approached, I'd talked to Blue Peter mm. and said, oh, you really want me on the show? And they were like, yeah, when you've, when you've done something big, <laughs> we'll come back to you literally the week after I had Blue Peter on the phone going, yeah, so uh, we want you on the show now because we, we saw that. And could you come and create it for us as well? And I was like, all right. So that, that Blue Peter was 2009, which was painted live on the show. Still one of the most surreal. The whole thing. Like, yeah. it, it, it ruined my childhood because I thought, I thought the whole building was like real. Oh, uh, yeah, I can imagine. And I was like, oh, it's a set. <laughs> they're putting it, what do you mean? They're, all, they're packing it all? I was like, I just remember being like a little bit of a game. Oh, oh that's not real. TV isn't TV land's not real. Um, now, you know, now that you know, I've seen as yeah, you know, kind of highlight and go, yeah, I like, did that. And yeah, really cool. Did you get a you badge? Got a badge. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy who's just walking around like with a with like a pot, like a pocket full of badges. <laughs> He's like, have you not got a badge? I was like, no. <laughs> and then I remember there was like a plinth with you know how you you could like earn special ones. Yeah. There was like a plinth with all them all on, and I was like, oh my god, like I could take, I could just take, I could take these, I could take because there's nobody here guarding them. Like in my in my childhood, like in my childhood memory, I'm like they're like gold, like and they were just kind of stuck to a, <laughs> to, to a bit of blue tack to a bit of cardboard. But yeah, no, I, I, I randomly a friend of mine who was with me. For that, because I was like, I just to unpack and help me get the car, and I think she was even more like, "What happened? Like, what is this, <laughs> Ian? What's going on?" Like, I don't know. I'm just just go with it, just go with it. And then, you know, and every time 
you know, like a TV thing happen, so, somebody else would be in touch and go, oh, I saw you on this. Yeah. Can you do this? So I, I my studio, I, I was in briefly in, in Birmingham, and I moved over to the, the Heritage Motor Centre at Gaydon, which is now mm. the British Motor Museum. Yeah. So I was there for, for five years. Uh, and in that time, you know, was able to progress and build the business and have clients come in and have their artworks done there and also use it as a base so that yeah. I could increasingly you know, be on that M40 car or being able to get down to Silverstone and get to, to, key, to key events. Yeah. How many events do you do a year now? This year, this year we've done a lot more. Did a lot more. We started earlier, starting in February. Um, there's, 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 there's key ones that I try me out. If I'm being commissioned by somebody, then I'll be at the most part yeah. of that yeah. brand. Yeah. So if I'm wearing stuff with a brand on, it's generally because I'm there for them. Uh, there, for, there for them. It depends if I'm going as me, where I can then bring all my prints and all my yeah, all my stock, and be pop band colour. Or if I'm on somebody else's stand and I'm part of their promotion, their display thing. Type I've, stuff. I've been, I've, I had some weird one. Like, I did I did a show called BVE. In London, which is like a like a visual okay. entertainment one, oh, so cool. like it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, the film industry yeah. essentially. So there's a, co- a company called CVP who supply. I have used CVP. So yeah, so CVP had me as their entertainment on their stand. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I was basically I was this, but around me there was like a gazillion cameras. <laughs> So and people could just literally use the camera and like film uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, test their their lens and zoom in and but the, the funny thing about that one was like you could tell like the students because they also had like kind of gim like big cameras who kind of swooped like so I'd be painting like, and this camera would like, <laughs> like all of a sudden the camera would like be like here or like I'm painting and a, a camera would be like boom <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like ow. <laughs> Guys, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah, I was like, uh, I, I, no, <laughs> like, that's a really bad angle. <laughs> um, one early one was the London Motor Show. I remember I got some paint on my, so it's 2009, the last, the last proper London Motor Show in mm. uh, Court in the Insignia was being launched, I think. Uh, and Chevrolet, was, I was there with Chevrolet. So they had me on their press day and their last day. And uh, I remember I got some paint on my on my feet or something. Yeah. And I then decided to walk out of my area, <laughs> and there's like a footprint <laughs> kind of going off off there. In, in, come back. Yeah, you know, I was lifted back in. I wasn't allowed to to, 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 to stand anywhere. But yeah, I, it's it's funny. Really, twelve 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 years of doing, you, you forget some events you've done, and yeah, it's not until you, it's not until you kind of go oh that was then that was 2012 13 14 yeah you know, like all those shit kind of, kind of almost blend into one now because it's like I remember them if they're you know when painting out in like Middle East you know, mm. you know out in Dubai you know, you know painting in front of the, the royal family like, all, like him and his sons yeah and like I'm sweat, I'm like so <laughs> hot I'm sweating and I look up and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> they're like mm-hmm. and then they walk off this is good yeah, I'm, like, I'm like I hope, I hope, I'm, I hope that was okay <laughs> you know, it was uh, yeah that was, well, that was bizarre painted on the one show with Chris Evans like, okay. and he, he was he was cool like he was like this and uh, he just sat over, the, over that side of the boxes with his son and just talked about why he owns mm. the cars he owns and he was just like having a chat with a mate. Yeah. Which was really nice. And he, what was really nice is that he, he took, he took in all that information and then related it to camera, like, you know, three hours later. Yeah. So he, he obviously was taking in, like, why I do it, who, you know, what I've done, blah, blah, blah. And then later he just related it to camera. It shows that he was really engaging. Really switched on and yeah, engaging of, with it, yeah. What it, what it, what it was about. The other one, you yeah, which was very, still very useful now is I, I, was involved in the Top Gear art special when they took over, oh, the, the, yeah. the, put a load of artwork into a gallery in Middlesbrough. So I got a phone call from the one of the producers just going, hi, yeah, it's blah, blah, from Top Gear. And I was like, oh, hi, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, have you got any artwork um, that we could have to put into a, you know, put into a, a, a gallery? Mm. And I was like, yeah, I've got, I happened to have some framed up at that point. And uh, they're like, right, okay, we need it at the, 
the, the test track at Dunsfold, and then we need it taken up to Middlesbrough, where you'll have it, it'll be on display. And, uh, and yeah, and obviously it still gets repeated now. And, yeah, that's cool. And people who didn't know me in 2009, who know me now, to them, like, oh my God, oh, you're on that episode. I was like, yeah. <laughs> They just rang me up. <laughs> that happened. It just, it's just the way it is sometimes. It's like, they just ask me, yeah, because you, you never know who's, when you're at a show, because my back's towards everybody, yeah. and not, it's a very British thing, you're not wanting to. Yeah, they're like, excuse me. Excuse me. Is it a, can, can we have a conversation? They don't want to ask. So it's not until after it, you know, the show, you kind of get the, you find out. All the feedback who, and stuff. Who, yeah, who was there or who wasn't there. And so, yeah, so, and that's happened a few times. Yeah, so. I was, I was asked to do the, the Park Fermi artwork for, for F1 out in Monza mm. in 2017. And I just said, how did you know? How did you find me? How did you know I existed? They were like, we know, we're at the shows. <laughs> we're fans of it, we're, we're fans of the sport and motorsport, so we will, yeah, we see where you are. But I, I think that, that was pro- that's still the hard, that was the hardest one. I think I ever, I ever. Attempt. Why so? Why so tricky or difficult? Uh, Monza 2017. It rained a that, lot. That doesn't help. A lot of paint doesn't dry in the rain <laughs> at all. Um, the 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 whole thing changed from us setting off from here to arriving in Monza. Right. Yeah. That the artwork changed. The stuff wasn't ready. Like what we asked. For yeah. Wasn't ready. The size of it changed. It rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. Just time scales, just just what was doable and what was a yeah the, the what I could physically do yeah in the time we had and what what was available what was available yeah it was it was that was that was I learned a lot it was an amazing experience and it was amazing to be part of F1 for a, a week a week or best part of a week and to see how it how it, it works. works how yeah what you see on TV and what is the machine. The, yeah, the, the absolute juggernaut that it is and how it's all done on, like, you, you see when a car goes off and hits a barrier and a, mm. you know, the Heineken branding falls down or, yeah, so that's all produced, everything's produced on site, <laughs> everything. Like, there's a guy in a in a truck who's who'll be ready to reprint really? that. Really? Wow. It's, and it's all produced on site. It's, uh, what they do is just incredible. And I was just a part of that. Yeah of that jigsaw for and how they relay it to to TV and, and, and everything was it was amazing but yeah that was probably the, the biggest lesson <laughs> le- yeah. learning and uh, of what I've done a lot you know over the thing is you can take from one project you can take it to another yeah a little bit yeah. a little bit I'm sure you do it yourself we, we on, a, on a shoot and you learn something something goes wrong and you're like oh okay yeah but the next time it, you go oh well, this is this is why I bought this with me or whatever yeah 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 so it's, it was <laughs> it was because of the weather that there's there's just nothing we could yeah you, you, I can't for, I, I, I couldn't predict it yeah, nobody would have predicted that qualifying would have been cancelled yeah like it, yeah or, or moved and yeah, there wouldn't be any other rate. Yeah, you know, it was just, it was just, and then the Sunday was glorious. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And we were able to work with it and do something. <laughs> um, I've been in a very fortunate position to learn a lot from the different projects yeah. I've done. And what's nice is that when I go and do school talks now, when, when I go in and talk to people about it, you, you, when you've got a, kind of a story of how it started in 2008 to some of the key things yeah you know oh this is I learned this did this changed this and it's you know it becomes like a quite a quite a thing that's been yeah. done and there's still plenty more to do as well do you um, has it evolved the the artwork you're creating has it evolved a lot since you started doing this style or uh, it's always I think my stuff's always been Colourful, yeah. It's always been on a large scale. That's what I think I've been always been most, mm. most, yeah, producing. So, and, and, and I really enjoy like if some events. There's just a sweet like Goodwood this year with Michelin was just a sweet spot of just creating stuff. Like we spent 
six months planning for it. Mm. So we were like, right, we need to get an artwork done each day. This is what we need to get done. It needs to be video, it needs to be time lapse. And we need to, when I say we, it was like me, because me and my dad yeah. worked together. Yeah, he's, so we're like, we spent from February to end of May just knocking out, like, creating artworks, making sure we get one per day in in conditions where we had power, right. conditions where we didn't have power. Okay, like, yeah. You know, so, like, what can we get done in a day? What do, how, when I say power, I mean, like, le- electricity. Because so, you, know, you want to be able to dry it. Yeah. If you can't dry it, then the artwork, where do you put wet artwork? Right, yeah. Because, yeah, so what do you normally... What do you do in that scenario? Head, well, if you've got power, you've got hair dryers. Okay. So how long does it take with a hair dryer to dry? Well, it will skin over. It will, it will, it will, it will skin over. So yeah, uh, it's not my favourite way of drying it. Ideally, you want natural. Just leave it. You yeah. want natural sun. You want sunlight and wind. You actually want sunlight and wind. Yeah. So that the wind takes away the dry, moisture. and then the sun will dry it. So what, what was very fortunate with Goodwood this year is that the area where I was. Was, it was like a conservatory. So in the morning you could paint comfortably. By two, one o'clock, two o'clock, it, it became like a like a sauna. Yeah. So it it would naturally dry because you had direct sunlight, yeah. and it was just dry. It would dry anyway. Perfect. So um, yeah. So we we worked really you know, for this year. We worked really hard to just to get into that routine of mm. paint. Painting something quickly, but also to the level that you to the want. level that I was. So I actually ended up speeding. By the time I actually got to Google, I was painting too quickly. Okay. So I actually had to. Help. Yeah, because I guess they say we want you to create this throughout the day. Yeah, we yeah. want you to sort of be creating it throughout the day, yeah. not in half an hour done and then standing yeah, but around. But with Goodwood, also you've got people arriving at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So you've got people literally punters in from eight. And they're there to like, so you've got 12, yeah, so. That's a long time, yeah. So it's a 12 hour day. And also you, people want to be, what a brand wants is that they want people on their stand or near their stand looking, yeah. Yeah, seeing what's, what's going on. Yeah. And it's a very, Brit, a very British thing of, oh, curiosity. <laughs> what's going on in there? I can see something going on over there. Um, and people will just keep, whether they can see it or not, they'll keep. Yeah. Because they, they like to be behind somebody going, oh, I'm hmm. gonna. See that's gone over there, but I can't quite see it. But I, I think I should wait here until. Um, so yeah, so it was. It, it, that was yeah, that was that was a really good exercise. Yeah, I've always wanted to be back at Goodwood. Yeah, but as it as it started for me, very much started two thousand eight at the Festival of Speed with doing the Lewis artwork and yeah. I want it was nice. Yeah, come from eleven circle, years on back. to come back and do it with brand and and the, you know, with. With the, the with the bigger aspect of being with Michelin and with a brand who who are then using that content to yeah. to promote themselves because I was painting with Michelin tires and and whatever so it's um and oh, so yeah. you have a do you do you have a tire sponsor sometimes no no just just depends <laughs> on, on who I I mean the treads of the tires are important like you do have different textures yeah from different tires uh, and I have worked for you know so Michelin Goodyear. Uh, Dunlop, Falcon, Nankang. Yeah, I've, I've worked for, for them all in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. So the, for the touring car in 2018, I did I did all the I went around and painted all the all the a majority of the touring car rounds. Right. Yeah. For that brand, for Dunlop, for Goodyear, I painted a giant eagle with their with their new eagle when it was the eagle something isometric something or other. Yeah. I painted a giant eagle. Yeah, which was done with their tyres. So yeah, so it just it just depends on what whether they want it as a at an event mm. or as a promotion. Promotional so, thing. Like yeah. a promo, so they'll, they'll video it, and it will be a a video. Right. So yeah, you know, if the artwork's so big, like the Lewis one, like the Guinness World Record one, it's the artwork's so big. And what do you, what do you yeah. do with it? Yeah. Whereas, whereas these ones. Uh, small, you know, for corporate head offices, for for yeah, so Michelin have got a head office in Stoke, they've got one in um, and in Germany, so the, the artworks can be put into places yeah, yeah. where where they can be seen, and it makes a nice store. 
Are you cranking them out? No, that is definitely not the right word. That's not what I mean. But are you <laughs> are you painting like pretty much every day now, or the full mix? Um, I think if. I think if I painted every day, I wouldn't enjoy yep. it. A hundred percent, I can see. Like, that. I don't know about yourself, but like, if you, if if, if it just becomes a, a thing job, you have to do, a thing I have to do, I don't do it because obviously it's what pays yeah, mortgage, yeah. it pays everything. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, you've got to be in a zone of without getting too artsy, or yeah, you've got to be in that area of right. I'm painting, mm. and what I tend to do is that if I've got ones to do. I'll do them all at, I'll be like, right, next, next. Okay, yeah, you right. get in the groove. You get, you, you get into that route, like, into that routine. It's very, it's, it's, a, it's in the summer, when I'm, when kind of peak event season, yeah, so if you're at an event, yeah, I mean, Goodwood was a whole week, so you, mm-hmm. I was there for the Monday through to the following Monday. But say you're arriving at Silverstone for the F1, so, so if they start gates open Thursday, you're setting up Wednesday. Yeah. Um, you might have been, I was at another event, on the, I would go back on the Monday, so you only have a day yeah. to like either unpack or just you just take your stuff sort it down, out, to, yeah. down to the next event and sort it out at the next event. Um, so it's often in the summer you, you, you're packing up, you know, you're, you've only either got one or two days max to do anything, yeah. and that's more likely to be paperwork. Yeah. Like it's more likely to be yeah you're not really having time to spend just in the studio chilling you're no. it's, it's event 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 and then the logistics around yeah logistics about getting the stuff from one place to another or where it, where it's got to be or like what the next artwork is get the canvas get all the materials get yeah. the yeah like yeah, I've got to make sure I've got this stuff to be able to do this stuff are the cars ready uh, have I got to brand up the cars have I got a yeah like what is it I've got to do prior to even thinking about getting it all out to paint. Mm. So yeah, so it's, I'd I say, I say I'd probably paint 30% of the time, like, so 70, yeah. 30 maybe, but I enjoy that 30%, 100%. Yeah. Like, once oh, I paint, great. it's that's... great, yeah. Um, but to make all that happen, you have to do the 70%. Got to, you've got to do the 70% and you know, chase up things and have meetings about, about whatever. Um, it's and that's yeah. You know, it's probably what you don't. It's certainly not what you learn at art school. Like all of that business stuff is what you learn when you're doing it. Yeah. When you're doing you know, and yeah, you know, and it hasn't always gone to plan. Yeah. You know, like it's you know, when, when so with the, the Guinness World Record, yeah, you know, we had to get the, the outline much like this had to be printed on a big scale it's 207 square meters which is yeah. just huge ridiculous you can't you can't draw you, you can't yeah. draw that you can't you've got to have that printed and the tech the the, the company i used because it was often these projects are done on uh, kind of late a pier yeah and, and then then all of a sudden the budget there so we can do it right go ahead go it's always it. last minute yeah really. um so we did a test piece we tested it and it worked, like because I had to see an, a, under UV light. I had to see a very faint outline. Yeah. Under UV light, we tested okay. it with a test piece. Perfect. But because the piece, the 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 material was so big, and they didn't have it in stock, they printed it on another material they did have it in stock. Hmm. But this material didn't react in the same way under UV light. <laughs> so all of a sudden, this outline under UV light, I can't see. <laughs> So you're on site going, uh, this, this, uh, this, and then, yeah, you've got the other clients going, so uh, what's the what's the plan? <laughs> you're like, ah, I'm going to work that out. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> this wasn't how it was meant to be. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, occasionally, but you, yeah, you kind of, you, you live and love it. Yeah. You know, uh, probably the worst one was, um, I've, done, I've created out in the States a few times. I've done yeah, out in America a few yeah. times. Uh, which has been fortunate, you know, great, amazing place to go and do it, particularly with their, with their car culture. I've been out twice before, so I've done out in Vegas yeah. uh, twice. Uh, Vegas and Miami, which is brilliant. Because it's like, oh my God, <laughs> you're British? 
Oh my god, you paint with, oh my god. Using a car. Like, how did you even get here? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an amazing, yeah, amazing place to go and do it but yeah, the, the, the third time I attempted not attempted that sounds, that sounds bad the third time I went to go I didn't know that I'm actually I'm actually classed as a performer oh right not so I need a performance visa oh right yeah not a standard visa yeah. or definitely not an Esther yeah so I flew into Detroit on an Esther because I'd done it before yeah no problem it's fine Fine. Fly into the, the into the, the airport. Go through security check. Thank you, sir. Go on, have a good day. And I, you bear I'm carrying quite a lot of equipment, so I've got a bag of equipment. Yeah. How much stuff do you take when you go to uh, these things when, abroad? When abroad, you, I'll take half the amount of cars. I don't how many take cars. Any, do you normally take? Uh, it's probably you want a mixture of big ones and little ones. So okay. you want probably thirty. Yeah. But I mean, even going through an airport with that's a lot of I mean, that's a lot of bags. Is it? Yeah, it, was, it, it all fits into one, like generally one bag. So oh, okay. I, I, I put the cars in there. Uh, I put my kneeling pad. I don't fly out with any batteries because if you think about it, these look like plastic wired boxes. Yeah, yeah. All with remote controls. Yeah, with remote controls. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't take any batteries with the cars, and I don't take any paint. So I fly with the cars, controllers, masking tape the minimum and yeah. the artwork whether that's which is normally rolled on a paper a paper, yeah. it's a paper based artwork so I'm walking through an airport and I look a little bit oh, there's, there's one guy with a lot of, a lot of stuff, lot of stuff. <laughs> so uh, yeah so I got, I got pulled up at Detroit and this guy was like oh can I see your passport and I said yeah, here you are and then he went thank you very much come with me and I said uh Exits that way. It's like, yep, you're all going this way. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> that's not. Uh, it's not what I want. That's not, <laughs> that's not what we wanted, is it? Really? And then, yeah, so because he'd obviously seen that I'd been into the States twice before, he'd mm. seen it as that I was breaking the law. Oh, yeah. For the third time. Oh, dear. So I was uh, stopped in uh, customs for three hours. All my stuff was taken off me, and I was put back on the same plane. No. Oh wow! Uh, with, yeah, with armed guards as well behind me. Oh dear! Yeah, it was. They take stuff a bit seriously. It was very they? serious. What well, What was even more serious was, <laughs> was I screenshotted my notes on my phone because yeah. I was trying to explain to my parent like what's going on. So yeah. like, I write it down a note, screenshot it. Yeah. Then I forgot to turn it on to silent. So they then made their yeah noise in. <laughs> whilst I was detained and they're like what are you doing they were like yeah you got, you got even more serious at that point <laughs> I was like oh, man, this is <laughs> and my client was like where are you I said I'm, I'm de-. and I said yeah and I was like can you speak to him explain what's going on yeah. and they were like no <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh. yeah so uh, sometimes did, was... that, did that get resolved uh, I, I was flying back and eventually I ended up doing uh, I ended up doing an artwork for them eventually the, the most frustrating thing was it was the launch of a of the global HQ. Oh. So they had like Ford, Chevrolet, Nissan. Like they had all all the big players. Yeah. Being, I would have been the entertainment. Yeah, yeah. For them. Right. So, you know, just one of those things. Just have, yeah, like yeah. It's, <laughs> it makes a good story. Now. It does. <laughs> it does make a really good story. <laughs> At the time, it was a bit sad. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Very stressful. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, but it, funny, this is the beauty of of um, of the internet, though, as well. Is is that the, the amount of support and nice things that were said, and people got in touch and said, "Yeah, it's happened to me." You know, the, particularly creatives in the states, where you're creating, yeah, you're you're creating something. It sometimes uh, it can be seen as you know, you, but yeah, just I have to make sure I have the correct. Uh, so you've got to get all the, the documents and whatever. Documents, yeah. Have you, have you always been comfortable painting and creating art in front of other people, or was that when you decided to start doing these installations? Was that something you had to come across? Yeah, deal I, with? I, I, what I what I really like is yeah, I mean, one the studio has always been in a public place. Yeah. It's never been like locked away oh, okay. and I've never had you know, you know it's even when I was at the even when I, when I was first at the Cursor Factory which was a unit I wanted people to kind of pop in pop in and be like oh, have a look. oh what's going on there 
I think all my work, a lot of my work has always been about process and engagement of that process. Right. And how, like with the, the sculpture, like you can literally see, oh, we've put it onto wires, and yeah. there's no like airy fairy grace about it. It's that's how it's done. Done. So I think the performance element was when it's been like bigger projects and stuff. I think that's yeah, you you can play a bit more with that because people are watching you yeah and you can be you can like people <laughs> love it when you when you're throwing paint out yeah yeah they look like, oh my god like he's really like this guy's a real artist <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah you, you can like if it's so a uh, sport I remember yeah one year is I just because uh, it's sometimes it used to be so busy like so many people I just used to put headphones on yeah and just have music I think I've seen you with headphones on and I just I just go right I can't I can't speak to everybody but I will just do my thing, and if they really, if they, if I know them or whatever, then I'll obviously, yeah, engage and whatever. But sometimes it's nice. I always have music on. Yeah, it's nice just to to have that beat to it or listen to you. Know, so often with the radio and stuff, it's um, it's just timings. I know what time it is in the day. Oh, okay. If, yeah, if, yeah. If, I, if I know that DJ's on, it's it's that it's that time because I don't I don't wear wear a watch so. I don't re- yeah it just gives you an idea of mm. what yeah what time of day it is um, and also yeah like often I'm not if I'm in the studio I'm not really with anybody so it's quite nice yeah. just to have yeah, yeah, something yeah. something in the background something on the garage something play, yeah, playing or yeah people talking what, what's nice about me here is that you, with the door open people will, will walk in yeah and with, with students nearby and whatever yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll inquisitively go oh, what's uh, what's going on yeah, it's cool. And if you're nearby, I would definitely recommend sticking your head in because yeah. it's quite a funky place. So the Skeletrics not working at the moment. So, oh. so no Skeletrics at the moment because, you know, dust. <laughs> just, <laughs> just dust. Over the years, I've been fortunate enough to experience things, travel with it. Yeah, I love love travelling with it. You know, Middle East has been a few times around Middle East and that's been real fun. Do you have a favourite place that you've been? Uh, I, I, I did... Miami was, um, I loved Miami. Mm. Miami, but I think creatively it was, it was just a cool city. There was just stuff going on, and it was just like, oh, 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 oh Orange, uh, Orange County as well. Orange County, mm-hmm. just so, just outside of, you know, a journey from Vegas. Yeah. Orange County was cool. There was just stuff going on, and it was like, the, the, the guy who, who was out there with his, he, was, he worked for the company, and he lived there, and he was like, he says, he said to me, it's not, you won't get it initially, but you'll, you'll, if you be here for a bit, you'll realize what it's like here. Yeah. And you'll kind of get that feel for it. And people are just super friendly, oh, you're an artist, can we meet my artist friend? And we went to like <laughs> studio, and it was just like, oh, you're pretty, oh. And then randomly I walked in, there's a, there's a, there's a helmet painter who's got a shop in, in, Orange, in, in Orange County. Oh, what's his name? He paints the helmet page for Ken Block. Yeah. And I walked into this store, and there was a Triumph motorbike on. To my right. yeah. I walked in. And, oh, it's good. Good to see another Brits made it over here. Yeah, I, said, <laughs> I think I said out loud. And uh, and then the girl behind the counter was like, "Yeah, me too." I was like, "What?" She was, she was, she was like, "Yeah, me too." And I was like, "Where are you from?" <laughs> She's like, "Dudley." It's like you are kidding me. I was like, this is this is ridiculous. But yeah, that was just, I, I, I kind of that's what kind of inspired this place a bit more was was he had a store and he had his products. Yeah, the helmet painting was his yeah. product, but he also had the merch yeah. that linked back to uh, Troy Lee, Troy Lee's Troy Lee designs. Yeah, yeah. Troy Lee, yeah. so he had. The sto- the, I think the, the, the actual painting happened at a place out in LA, uh, more towards Vegas, and the store was more of his commercial mm, element to it. Front to it, yeah. So, uh, and I kind of, I, what was really odd, she was like, oh, I was chatting to the girl that counts for a while. She was like, oh, he'd love it if he you know, met you and, and talked to you about what you're doing. And he and she's like, oh, he just he just doesn't come into the store though. Just, and then he literally walks in. <laughs> and I'm like, this is wicked. <laughs> so and he was cool. He was a really nice guy. Just just and a, it was just nice that that had that kind of creative but commercial yeah element to it, which is what I kind of aspire to be a bit a bit more like. 
is to have that view so that there's more than just prints yeah. there's going to be more to it to, to the brand yeah because if someone wants to sort of get involved with pop band colour at the moment I guess there's various options you could buy a print mm-hmm. you could commission you to create an artwork yep or have you at an event yep is, are there are those the, the main they're, 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 they're the kind of main thing and then um, and then you've got stuff like I still do school talks I go in and okay, do, yeah. I do uh, kind of corporate team builds mm. as well which is all kind of part and I show a presentation of what I've done yeah and, yeah so it kind of gives a yeah so, uh, yeah, so it, it, there are different elements to it and uh, you know my aim is you know people people really like you know the kind of the, the paint splattered cars so you know, yeah, kind of, yeah like they like them as this and the amount of people if you sell that they'll buy it yeah is that a what is that it's four a by G- four squared it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's a it's a, it's a, it's a G wagon uh, that has been pop banged so but actually these are these are one of my favourite like paintbrushes to, uh, to use the wheels on it are really good and it's oh. actually the same tyre that's I modelled on my wedding ring oh oh so okay that, that's the tire, quite cool the tyre is that that's, that it's that tyre made smaller do you like, you have to wash that ring a lot <laughs> it's it's now got like red in it I quite the whole idea was that it was going to get paint in it yeah but in a way that then it would change colour yeah so if I was doing a blue artwork it would then go yeah, blue yeah, yeah. so it's red at the moment because I did a piece and I had to really cake my hands in red paint and do something, <laughs> so it's got red paint in it. But I, that was the the intention that it was, yeah. was going to be a. It was going to get going to yeah. get painted up. Paint painting it. There's elements. Yeah, so you've got the prints, you've got originals. Me creating at, at shows, events, um, and then there's going to be the, there'll be other merchandise. Yeah. Available, yeah, we're doing like pin badges and okay, yeah. stickers and just some different things that people want is different levels so people can engage yeah, in. Yeah, 100%. So there's Whereas not like, like a little kid. Yeah, so a little kid who would love a sticker. Yeah. At the same time, you know, they might, their pocket money might be £25. So a print to them is like, oh, that's all, that's all my pocket money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then obviously you've got the bigger prints and the originals. You know, obviously, you know, I want people to own originals and that's. Uh, yeah, that's what the business the the, the, the business is, is is to create people's passions, people's ownerships, and for them to be in. What's what I want is them to be involved in the creation. Yeah, yeah, you know, is is that it's a very because it, they oh what if it goes wrong? Paint dries. <laughs> Paint dries. So you know, if it goes wrong, we can always always change it. It's uh, and that's 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 the the kind of enjoyment element of it is is that it's it's accessible. I think it's, yeah. it's really important to have artwork that is accessible so when when it's on their wall or it's on our wall they can go oh, I, I, I did this and I did it with this and people go what did you do a pot? it's painted with a pot and like here's the video of of it being done yeah it's, so it's very social led it's you know it's, it's it over the 10 years 12, 11 years I've been doing it the, the market has changed how yeah. people engage has changed and I've had to adapt. Al- al- alter and adapt so that it it fits that. Yeah. So so that, that it's not just artwork, it becomes something that people you know, even before painting this, people go, Oh I can't wait to see it. <laughs> like they're excited to see it. Before, yeah. And that that's the right kind of thing to have is people's excitement for something being being created and then being able to engage with it after yeah I, I'm really excited to see it because I've seen your art all over the place and obviously this room is now full of it but I've seen you at events forever and to be able to have one of my cars on is pretty is sweet well, it's, a, it's a pretty yeah and what 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 I love is that not finding out about it yeah like finding out about we had what? a little chat when uh, just before the podcast and Ian asked me he was like okay so like just like explain about the car and we had a good good little chat but that's for me it it gives me it gives me when I'm painting it I'm like alright that's why that yeah yeah it, it kind of the story behind why it, you know, why it was created you know, the one who recently Morgan uh, you know, John, Jonathan Morgan you know, the car was being built as I was painting the artwork. Oh, okay. And the artwork of the car finished at the same time. Oh, okay, cool. So I was able to go over to the car, see the colour or the exact colour that was being done, yeah. and then go back and put it into that artwork. And then, you know, uh, Jonathan, you know, Jonathan, the designer, signed the artwork. So it was very much done 
as the car was being that's really cool as, as it was being produced so and that's what you could do is you, you can run it, run it alongside things and go right tell me when it's being finished or you, yeah and that whole artwork was based on a on an artist impression it wasn't even a photo of the actual car yeah it was an artist impression <laughs> of the car before it was built but yeah I think I, that's why I, I really enjoy finding out about it is because people ask me questions when they're when they're buying a print or whatever and they go oh is that is that, is that that person's? Oh, is that the car? Is that that car? Uh, yeah, particularly how social, social media is, is you know, Instagram feeds and oh, I've seen that on, yeah, that's that person's, you know, we've done like drift cars and whatnot and kids will buy a prints because it's that particular car. It's that particular car, that's definitely it. And I, like, when I walked in here, I saw all these Hot Wheels on the walls. So you have quite a Hot Wheels collection. And I was saying how I've, I decided at one point, I was like, okay, I'm just, I don't want to have loads and loads of loads of little cars everywhere. So I'm just going to buy the ones that I own. And then I realized I went to Le Mans Classic, saw this 73 RSR that I've seen at a few events. And then I saw the model of the car that I've seen racing. I was like, okay, I've got it. Like that. That's just like my favorite car. I've got to, I've got to buy that. And you get that association with stuff you've seen, like having an artwork of a car that you recognize that just means so much more than just a generic whatever it is. Yeah. No, t- totally. I mean, yeah, my, my Hot Wheels collection was never, <laughs> it was, it was never meant to be, a cl- but it's one of those things that is like, it, when I find a particular one or seen one, I'm like, oh, that, it, there's that, yeah, when I am at events, yeah, I'm going past a supermarket or a toy store or whatever. Yeah, um, there is, yeah, I get, I enjoy collecting them. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't massively drink. I don't smoke, so I see it as as my this is thing. thing. Yeah, my thing that I've, I've invested in, and uh, and most of it. Yeah, majority of the ones are ones that are collectible, or I know are collectible, or because there's a whole that that is the joy, the ultimate joy of the car working in the car industry is it the subcultures to the to the culture yeah like when someone says like oh you like cars like, well that's a bit of a broad brush <laughs> yeah exactly that's literally like just getting the biggest brush and just going yeah, yeah. that's okay. cars talk to this other person he also <laughs> likes cars uh, and uh, and that's what's great yeah is that I have friends who are my age and young, older than me who also have the cl- and mm. they'll, te- they'll drop me a whatsapp going have you got this one yet <laughs> have you got uh, yeah, have, when you find it can you get me one as well yeah and I'm like, yeah, cool. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we we're all we, we all have our own passions and our own interests. And yeah, I, I like my, you know, I've got the the Magnus Walker ones, and then there's some classic Mazdas, and RX7s, and some of the Fast and the Furious stuff. Um, but I know some of them are discontinued now. So you know, can you put a price? Yeah, how do you put a price to, to how if I had to refine these? Yeah, it would be. Stressful. It would be impossible. Like you just wouldn't be able to. So it's um, and it adds a bit more colour to the studio. Yeah, I think it's really. I think it's cool. One of the things I've loved about working in the car industry, as whether it's as a photographer or doing podcasts or whatever, is the fact that I get to meet all these people. Now you must have met a ton of people through doing what you're doing because obviously you're at all these events, but you are working with various brands and companies and like if you met you, do you enjoy that side of it yeah I do and, and uh, it's fascinating some of the people I've met you know aren't the ones that you go like, oh what famous person have you met <laughs> and you go yeah okay I've, I've painted with Jensen Button he was lovely he was lo- like the loveliest guy and yeah. he didn't have to and he just came over and he created the artwork and you know next time I look around he's like I'm like literally flooded by people like yeah. all watching like a massive you know behind me watching as he's painting painting with Lewis, Lewis you know with Lewis Hamilton uh, done, done for Sky Sports but sometimes it's it, it's the people you meet along the way and who, yeah. you know who you don't who don't expect to meet um, <coughs> bless you thanks <laughs> um and they've got like they the the their ownership of it or you yeah, know being like a Morgan three wheeler owner, like the the, the customization and the, the things that go on in that kind of again, that kind of subculture of that mm. particular brand. Because it's, it's very you know, if you're owning a three wheeler, you're very yeah, you're very specific about a, you're being very specific about 
a silly car. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I love that it's a silly. Yeah, I love the car for its silliness. But also, I love the brand. I love going over to the factory, and me. You know, sit, you know the NDs sat at the you know, the opposite you yeah. know, the next table across. He's like, oh, "You're right, in, hey, dude." <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a, really a lovely, cool friendly family brand to be part of, and that's. Mm. Well, I think what is with the car industry is that you know, there's it's all yeah you know, the people are connected by one or two other yeah you know, like yeah you know, I'm sure we talk about oh you know him or no yeah, yeah. you know, that person oh they done that and they done that and um and it evolves you know, in terms of how how it is and you know, I I I run a helped run a, a you know a car club meet no I'd call it a meet because I have bad names meets um, <laughs> and it's fat yeah you know, like it's fascinating talking to like. A 16 year old now who's modified their Lupo. Yeah. And their passion. But it's, and I think it's cool. Like, they're like, oh, but it's, oh, it's only a little, like, it's your, your ownership. Like, yeah. and you're doing something with it and you want to sh- share that with other people around you. That I'm not judging you by what your car is. Yeah. Like, I'm enjoying that your age, that you're, enjo- creating yeah, something. Creating something yeah. and, and I'm helping to facilitate your enjoyment yeah. of it for three hours on a Wednesday night and you know and hopefully my knowledge of how car you know car things I've been at or you know been involved with you know, hopefully that that helps them when they're going to another meet you know going somewhere else and you know meet somebody else and hold oh, this or yeah and that's and that's often what it's about is that kind of that very much like community element of it which sometimes you, you know people just through like Twitter or yeah. Facebook or Instagram or, yeah. or whatever but actually knowing them as a person as well and that's what, yeah, when, when we got married earlier on in the year is yeah the cars at the wedding were all friends yeah. of mine yeah like we and it was like all right, how can we make you know it's about, it's about me and Taz but actually there's an element of what I am as well yeah. and we were to have yeah I met the guy yeah so if you were down at Revival this year at all I, I couldn't make it but yeah but they had an Italian job right yeah r- recreation mm. but the minis that I had at my wedding were the same minis that oh, were really? in yeah. the Italian job revival and I met him because I was at Chelsea Walsh yeah and I, I just happened yeah, I had an artwork hanging up and he was eyeing the artwork and I said oh well why do you like it so much he said well, I, I own the Italian job minis and I said <laughs> by chance do you rent them out and he was like yeah do you do weddings I was like he was like, yeah. I was like, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, how else can you get nine people from one venue to another on mass? Perfect. And have the three Italian job That's minutes. That's perfect. With a Mercedes SLS and a Morgan Morgan Plus Six as well. Sick. And that's uh, I, I, that's what I really enjoy. Yeah, you know, this is this has is and has been my life for for twelve years. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, but I'm fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have met people that have had a positive impact yeah and uh, and have affected me on a personal level you know, it hasn't just been about work it's about the car culture yeah that goes with it so um, I think that's a re- you know, really important part of it it's, it's not it's not so, it's, it's about these things that we all you know, these, these wheeled things that yeah. we own, but actually it's about the conversations we can have with other people around we, them and about yeah, them and about them and you know like I've seen your car uh, Mr uh, yeah. Mr. Heritage just parts up and now I'm like oh, I remember seeing it because I was like oh, it's <laughs> such a cool thing to see yeah, yeah. It's, it is so cool and I, I love meeting different people at different places and whether it's them I I quite like it when if, if my the Ferrari's parked up somewhere and someone sees me standing next to it like they, it very much shifts the conversation it can't I can't just like slip into someone else's conversation and talk about their lupo or whatever because people go oh but why would you want to talk about that or whatever so I do like it when I'm not necessarily known like that or turn up like that and I quite often I don't go to events in a fancy car or just because I just quite like walking around and blending in and then just joining any conversation and just chatting to people about whatever. It's great. It's very like the the amount of time, like when I'm not, when I'm not paying at an event and uh, yeah, maybe I'm not, occasionally I'm not paying splat. (laughs) And it's not like I've been talking to somebody and then you can see the twig right at the end. They go, oh, you're that guy. (laughs) 
And they're like, oh, but you're not, you're not on your knee. Like, I was like, well, no, I can come to a car event. Yeah. Like, I'm also I, a human. <laughs> I like these events. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to it anyway. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it, it's a, yeah, like I say, it's, 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 a, it's a funny. It, it also can be a funny thing of if I'm out in a three wheeler, can you, know, you can't just go to petrol station because people are like, am I? Is it, how old is it? There's all these kind yeah. of, yeah, these these kind of things pop up because people are like, how does is is that? Yeah, we know it was over at the wedding in it, because we it was it was our wedding our wedding our wedding car. And people were like, did you did you drive it over? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, why, why? It's my car. It's a car. <laughs> you drive it back. It's like, yeah, but you're gonna get. What happens when it rains? You get wet. <laughs> is your um, is it is it wrapped? Yes. So your three wheeler, Ian's three wheeler is like an art car. Both of your cars are art cars, basically. Yeah. And yeah, so it's like looks like one of these crazy paintings, over wrapped around a Morgan three wheeler. It's very striking. It's yeah, no, it's uh, it was originally a press car. Yeah. And um, what happened for some re- for so- somehow Morgan ended up with two three wheelers yeah. on their press fleet, and in twenty fourteen when I started working with them, they they said to me, um, I know, I said to them, we should wrap it. We should do yeah. something fun with it because it's a fun car. You, yeah, we should, we should, do it. and they were like, "Okay, we'll wrap it." So we, so we, we revealed it at Autosport International as yeah. a, as a wrap. Got, um, got GF Williams, uh, George to, yeah. to do do some um, some photos of it, and it went mad. Yeah, the car there, and we got some good shots of it. And I said to him because that was January. I said to him, "Oh, we should, we should drive it." Should have it down at Geneva because Geneva's their big show. Yeah, that big year. Should have it. Should have something. They're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, we could. Have. I think they were launching the Aero Eight. I think the Aero Eight was that year. Um, oh, and they, and they were and R and I. Like, oh, we should. Oh, it might it might detract away from what we need to sell. Hmm. I said okay. I said, I said oh, I should drive it down. And it was like, oh, and then they were like, okay. And I was like, oh. Are you really, you really <laughs> wanting to drive the three wheeler down to Geneva? Oh. oh I thought you were going to say no. <laughs> so, yeah, so we, so yeah, the plan, yeah, we then drove it down to Geneva and it, it was insane. It was a wicked, it was a brilliant trip. Yeah. At the same time, every, every, every weather you could <laughs> possibly imagine, including snow. Like, I just remember the snow coming in going, what, where do you put the wheel? Do you put the wheel? in the <laughs> drop like yeah 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 because you've got that do you put the front in yeah, the snow in the or snow. do you put the back in the snow yeah because the power's going to rear wheels so do you t- put the back into the into the snow and have the power like what, yeah it was just one of these really odd cars that you just go this oh, it's all just wrong all of it's right yeah and um, but it was actually it was great it was it was, a, it, was a, it was a really fun it was a fun trip that's yeah, nothing like you yeah, know ownership of these things is is the experiences mm. that that you get to do, you get to do, and uh, you know each year there's the the the, the Morgan three wheeler, the Pickersley three run from the factory. Where there's forty five of them, <laughs> and when you've got That's that many together, it's just yeah, you just you just you just, you just, you just don't see it. Yeah, yeah, you just don't see it that often. Is that many three wheelers together, and it's fun because you just see you, again you see the customization and what people have done and changed and altered and and uh, and all that. So it's um, yeah, it's it, it's a great yeah. That's one of the great things about that brand. It's it, it's a it's very much a, a fun. It's a really cool brand. I I went to the factory a month ago maybe had a look around and it's just it's just a really nice place. It's a really great environment. What they do is really cool. I I drove the three wheeler and I drove but well, they've done one with like a loud exhaust. Oh the crazy horse exhaust. Um, no, it was it was it's like a Morgan I don't know what the it's from Morgan. It was the orange one you drove? Uh it was it wasn't orange. It was it just it had like a hundred miles on it when I drove it. Right. I think it was grey. Right. And they're like stage one kit and then I drove the new plus six. Mm. But the the plus six I thought was an interesting car, but it didn't uh, it's not something I would buy. But the the three wheeler, I just had a hoot yes. the entire like time. Massive grip. And the <laughs> the video out of it, I'm just smiling and gr- giggling <laughs> and grinning like the entire time. And I think it sort of sums up that experience of that car. It's just hilarious. Yeah. And yeah, it is 
I think the thing is with the, with the you know, is you, you're committed, like you're absolutely yeah, you're in it. Like if you if you're owning something like that, it's there is so much wrong with it <laughs> at the same time. But what what it what it brings to you as a as a just as a uh, an enjoyment is just you know great. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's a silly thing, but it's brilliant. Brilliant. It's brilliant. And it's, it's and it's great that it still exists. Yeah. Is it? I it, love that it still exists. It's you know it's it's. Uh, you know, I'm not really a you know kind of a track track toy type. Yeah. You know, I don't really do like caterums or yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, you know, in terms of the the naught to sixty and the, the the fun you have at at low speeds. Yeah, cruising around at 30, 40 miles an hour is hilarious. Yeah, and uh, and, and just just the noise, like the noise, the air, the wind, and just everything that you experience at that speed is just yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a. Uh, yeah, certainly a, a fun. Yeah, and I'm very fortunate to be able to have ownership, yeah, part ownership, mm. and be part of of, uh, of of that as well. It was very cool. I'm slightly wary that we are we are eating away at the time, so I feel like I should probably yeah, sure. sort of wrap this up pretty soon. So I normally finish these podcasts with five questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with these five questions. All oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's gonna kneel differently. Okay. Do you have a most memorable driving trip or journey? Yes, three wheelers in Geneva, easy. Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty just, exciting. Yeah, that was just the, the the best trip. Same time, the driving down to the F1 in the van yeah. with Dad. That whole trip was just like that's, that's, I, I still can't. Yeah, as a work, I think as a work trip, I think that's the 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 most memorable in terms yeah. of. Just so significant and all the stuff. Well, the excited builder, what happened, uh, and on the way back, we because we were in a van, we just had the most amazing views of the hit, like of the going through the Italian. Yeah, it was just incredible. So, I'd say that was a yeah. In terms of leisure, Morgan work, I'd say the Italian trip. Right. Next question: five car garage, unlimited value. It has to fit into your life. That's about it. Fit into my life. Uh, I've already yeah. I'd, I'd keep the I'd keep keep the three wheeler. I'd have a land. I have a defender of some nature. New defender or older? I, I do like the new defender. I think it's going to be. It's much going to be much more of a lifestyle vehicle. Yeah. Uh, I, I I I think I'd say I once had a press one ten yeah. station wagon with as much as yeah. It had all the bells and whistles on it. Mm. Uh, I'd probably take it down to somewhere to have a bit more added to it, but I'd definitely have a Defender. I saw one of those James Bond ones oh, the yeah, other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Pretty cool. I'd, yes, I'd probably say uh, a Defender of some... What would be your sort. daily driver? Daily driver. I mean, it could mm. be one of those two, but maybe not. So I had an R8 out once, mm. and as a daily supercar, as a daily, like... Yeah. That's such a day... Like, it's such a good car that's it's just it's a great car that you could also 100% it's like yeah you could go shop it's just it's, a really good car it's, it's, it's just and uh, yeah and sometimes you know, when, yeah, I, 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 I did enjoy when I had that out it was enjoyable because of what it could do what it sounded like what it did but also it was just really practical so I, I, I quite like I don't know the, the latest designs are getting a little bit fussy I kind of like the original the yeah 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 original how the original the Gen One, Gen, so. yeah, I think uh, that was that was nice. Having had the SLS at the wedding, like yeah. go, going doors, a- anything with going doors, yeah, anything with going doors is pretty cool. Would I want uh, te- well, the Tesla thing? We've always got going doors, but I don't think it's that pretty. So now I'm just looking at my Hot Wheels collection. And just well, going, yeah, it's quite a good <laughs> reference just point. Going, what would I? Uh, well, first I'd, I'd get my Chevette fixed. Right, I've got a Vauxhall Chevette. Which is at the moment is just a shove it because <laughs> it's in the garage and it just needs a bit. Of, it needs. Needs some work. I'd like. I'd like to have that fit. Like to get that done because personally, as a memory, as a yeah, as something which I grew up with my uncle driving and mm. it signifying Christmas and stuff. I'd good memories. It, yeah, as a as like a. I think it's one of those cars that I think once it is done. And people see it. And go, oh, my, I, I remember a Chevette. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, it's now in that kind of getting to that era of it's kind of, kind of, 
Yeah. I'm like, cool. <laughs> mm, like, but at the same time, having done, as I do the kind of the dub club and the modified car stuff, I've seen a beautiful Mark One Escort that's right. Like, yeah, yeah. And it looked, out, and it was in the same brown. Hmm. So I can't, I I, it's one of those tricky cars. Would you, would you make it back, bring it back to stock and just leave it stock? Yeah. Or would you modify it so it's... Tweak it, yeah. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. And uh, Van Gogh that, Morgan, um, some kind of super... <laughs> can I have your blue, can I have the yeah. their 40? Yeah. Because, you know, and I like that it's blue. I like that it's not red. Yeah, it said money's no value, so, but... Yeah. Money doesn't matter, so 100% there's a price that that car would go for. Okay, I'll, I'll take that one off. Then. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's poor, isn't it? And, and then something else. Oh, well, I'm just trying to look at what this is. I think as another day, the RS6. Yeah, it ticks a lot of boxes. Because that's just a wagon in it. And yeah. I could put my stuff in the back of it. And if, if I also had a permanent fuel card. Yes, yes, <laughs> like, yes. Like, as I, lo- I loved how I had an RS4 out, I think. Yeah. And I just, I was just at the petrol station every day. Yeah. Because it's just too. It's too easy to put your foot down and then the fuel economy just goes down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, I, and I quite, the new one looks quite, the new, the late. The, I really the, like the new ones. Yeah, I think it's looking a little bit <clears throat> angry as well. Yeah. So, I, I, they're my initial thoughts. Cool. I'd probably change. Right, next question. Most undervalued car at the moment? Some of you think, oh, that's either exceptionally good value or, yeah, well, yeah. Well, this is where like, things like the XJ220 have kind of fallen into that bracket of where it's, How it, much is an XJ220 I now? Don't, I don't, well, this is the thing, you know, because it was the, you know, it was They were like 200 or something. You, you could, and now, but now they're like, but, but, I don't they, know because they, they've now done that 20 year thing of oh look at it it looks amazing now yeah it's a bit like the LFA I mean that was the LFA has like, 100% done that yeah it, it, it's kind of like the sound of it what it is and what it, and the, the kind of the purity of how it was designed I think it's and I don't think that many people bought them you don't see that many around I've seen, I've seen like I've seen the blue, the blue I've seen press, the press cars. <laughs> I've seen the blue press one a, a fair bit. There was a white one and the British. Yes, it, that the, one's around. The blue and the white one. And that's that's about it. Sick car. Underrated. I'm just trying to think what else is kind of underrated. I know, I, doing the club thing on a, on a Thursday, I see so much stuff now. I'm like, oh, I'll have that as well. Do, 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 do. RS car, actually an RS Cosy. Mm. Escort RS. They're cool. They're cool. I don't think they've been under pressure. I just think they're caught. Yeah. Going back to the five car game, I don't know. <laughs> as well. But then you've got cars, you'd have to have a Subaru as well. Of some nature, probably. I recently came across some like competition, like old WRC cars, like Subarus and stuff. And they're like a million quid. Like, what? When it's did like, that happen? It's like, it's like all the Super Tour stuff. Like, so Demon Tweak, he's got the Volvo 850 Super Tourer, mm. and he's just like, do, do we even run it? Do we even start like, <laughs> got to have a team of 10? Oh just God. To, just yeah. uh, Tick it over. Just to, just to even start it. Whereas the modern day stuff, oh, E30s, they're, they're, they're quite nice. They? Yeah, they are nice. E30s quite nice. They're quite slow, mm. but they are nice. Mm. I think it's pretty aren't. Okay, so we've gone through some musings. The final question is what is the most interesting car for you at the moment? What do you find yourself Googling or looking up on Auto Trader or interesting. all of that? I think the thing is now we're in a, we're in a, we're in a, in a funny old market of like, there's a lot of this new tech, like electric yeah. electrification and, uh, and then, but then you also have the older stuff, but the older stuff like big V8s and stuff become old, old, Old but old and cool. Or old but cool, and like I see a lot of like we have for the event here. We have like a lot, a lot of our like bag bends stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, they are really cool. They're they're, they're proper. I see some proper stuff. I'm just like, oh man, yeah, I have I've had that hundred um, percent. Yeah, for me it's true because it, I always it, it's kind of like is it, is it is it just like for daily use or is it for business? You know. Is it for business use or what we are what yeah. 
Uh, yeah, well, uh... This is literally like, oh, this new blah, blah, blah came out. I thought that was interesting. Or like I've the, been looking the, at like the 50 new cars. Honda, I think like the new Honda E. The, the E, that, that, that could be quite interesting. I think, uh, I think once we get to a point where electrification kind of becomes a bit more afford, afford Yeah, 100%. That, you know, when I think we might be... I've point. had a few guests say this, actually. Alex... Goy was talking about is it the new was it the VW3 th- or something I, 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 ID3 yeah and then Paul Wallace he was saying he the new Peugeot 28E like all these actually all these little cars that are electric now are just bring that make the, make so much more sense to yeah. most people than any of the other stuff so there was some really interesting I did a project for Nissan recently and so they one of the things that they've, they've built is so the, the old batteries they're now making into like portable power packs oh. so they, they cut up an engine into like the battery the, le- yeah. the batteries and cut it up into into quarters yeah or however much and then they want to, you to buy that power pack and you take it away with you camping or glamping <laughs> or whatever you do but it's an old leaf battery oh really <laughs> which you then so there's it's interesting that the they now think about actually what the left what's left out the know, recycling the, the of re, stuff the upcycling recycling reusing of older batteries and tech mm. how can, that can benefit the that lifestyle is quite, that is interesting. of the new or the, the Jimny as well Suzuki Jimny yeah that's the first time I saw one of those in the flesh I was just like oh my god this thing is tiny yeah I, pa- I passed a really cool one on a motorway you did that and it just looks with, like with a, with a little bit of spec on it like yeah. roof rail it just looks like a little G-Wagon it does like, have you seen there's a kit you can get a kit from like some Asian company that it's I think it's like six grand which if you're putting that on a Jimny it's quite expensive but it literally turns it into a G-Wagon but yeah two thirds size and I, and I think so, like some kind of like, nailing it like that was just super it's just cool. cool it's just cool and I think that's uh yeah, without too much tech, like too much tech thrown in on it, just a simple kind of. It's a car. It's a car. It, you could take it off road if you want to, <laughs> and you know, it's not going to break too yeah. much because it's not enough for it to break. Oh. Yeah, it's just um, bits. So yeah, there's, I think there's, it's, it's an interesting time for for you know, I don't know, I think you know, Morgan included and all yeah. these guys, the littler companies of how they can develop and. With with tech yeah, and how's that going to change? And how's that going to change the old? But uh, you know, the beauty of something is, is that it is that kind of touchy feely. You, yeah. you know, it, it's an old. It, it doesn't feel brand new. It, it has some some soul. Yeah, because when you look at a motor, like a, as in an electric motor and a battery, it's not. You don't you don't get that touchy feely because you really don't want to touch it. If, if, if something went wrong, that's just going to electrocute you. Whereas, you just, like, motors haven't changed. Yeah. Petrol motors or whatever. It, you know, you get an old car, old, 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 and it's still got an engine in it. And now you look at something and it's still got an engine in it and you can play with it. And we're definitely in that point where, at least over the last probably like six, seven, eight, maybe even longer, you open a bonnet and it's just a whole bunch of plastic. They just cover it all up. Mm. So you've lost, we've already lost that, like, touch of the engine really yeah and that kind of layer like there's layers between you and what what is there what what is there it'd be interesting to see what how that tech develops and how it works it's a bit like you know kind of you go into revival and having that noise like experience and like everything's loud you don't even need to see the cars you can just hear all this epic noise it's just there's just like that living breathing Thing. thing whereas I mean even with F1 now like you don't go to you know when no. I'm at Silverstone you, you hear the heli- heli- mm-hmm. helicopter go up and you go oh, okay, they're coming out they're coming. but when they send out an old VT, V10 yeah, it's yeah. like a screaming like the entire way around the track you can hear it yeah yeah well if it's Silverstone, Silverstone Classic and they're sending out the old V10s around and it's just like you literally can't, you can't even hear the person next to you because no. it's just like it's so loud um, but the same with you know kind of well, I guess that'll be the beauty of things like the more classic and, and the Silverstone sort of classic is that you'll, you'll still be able to you'll see still be able things. to experience stuff well 
Thanks very much Pleasure. For, for coming on the podcast and having me down to your to your studio. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to continue to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to, to, to paint this. And uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, I think if I painted what, you'd, you'd have just be like, what? Oh, yeah. well, what? Oh, I didn't, what? didn't hear what he said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much. Pleasure.